Okay. 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 Uh. Okay. Hello. Okay. Okay. Uh... Hello. All right. Muffin Master and DeBess are both shouting at me. Um. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm gonna answer those questions, but real quick for anybody in Vodland, uh, you need the intro, right? Because you're in the future. You're not alive right now. So if I start off just talking about random shit, you'd be like, what the fuck? Number 52, that was a 52nd new player tournament. That means we have been doing a new player every week for a year. 52 weeks in a year, that's how that works. So take that, middle finger to you. Um, yeah, we have a game in front of us here. The players, if they can hear me, can start whenever. I will cease rambling when we're in game, but as long as we're in the lobby and loading in, I'm going to do the whole spiel, right? Uh, hi, Jambo4. Anyway, yes, every week we have a new player tournament. It does flip back and forth in between the weeks in an EU-friendly time and an NA-friendly time. This week is in an NA-friendly time. Where I am, it is 7.30 p.m. On the West Coast of the United States, it is 5.30 p.m. This is the latest we can do it so that those people can try and get off work, but I can also go to bed at a decent time. So if you're, like, over in Europe and you go, wow, there's no fucking way I can play in this, you play it way too late, don't worry, next week will be a little friendlier to you. Tonight and most of our tournaments are a Swiss style for four rounds. It means if you join, you get four rounds no matter what. They're randomly generated. Sometimes you get the same opponent twice. Sometimes you get a buy round twice. When that happens, I will change it manually and we'll just get by. It's a very chill atmosphere. Uh, after that, when we get to the end of the Swiss stage, if somebody has a 4-0 sweep and nobody else has 4-0, I guess it's over. Boom. Bim, bang, boom, done. That person wins, they get a Bone Ripper roll that just basically signifies them as not a new player anymore. And uh, then they can graduate and do whatever they want, you know? They can play in normal tournaments, they can play in a Vermin League or whatever. But uh, you can't just keep rejoining new player tournaments and slamming them over and over again. If there is a tie at the end of the Swiss stage, we will just form a mini little bracket of best of one games until we just decide on a winner. The more traditional way. So it's the spiel of what's going on tonight. Did I miss a blue fire nerf? Or is it new in the upcoming build? Uh, I don't have a patch note, so that'd be through experience. And I honestly haven't cast blue fire one time on the free LC. I just had the free LC. I have not played the DLC yet. I'm under an NDA. So I can't disclose if I already have the DLC or if I will get it in the future. But what I can tell you is just the truth, I have not played it yet. If I have it, or if I don't have it, I have not played the DLC yet. I've only played the free LC. So that's Epidemus and then the reworks. That's what I've done with. Anyway, I didn't try Blue Fire. So I don't know. On the live patch, it's not very good. Back to the original question, Muffin Master. So with my work schedule, this is going to get really tough. Because um, I know that there are some people who like the new player tournaments on weeknights. And some people who like them on weekends. I, with my new job, my old job, I was very project-based. I wasn't very time-based. Where it's like, you need to get this railroad, I'm making this up, you need to get this railroad built in a year. As long as we get to January 1st, I don't care when you're out there driving stakes in the ground, right? This new job I have is a Nor 9 to 5, which is making weeknights insanely hard because I literally got home, slammed down dinner, and now we're here. And then after this is done, I'm going to go to bed and go back to work. The EU times just aren't going to happen during the week. So what we're going to have to do, I think, is I'll host an EU time one every, once a month on a weekend. And then I might have to recruit Tactical Itch or one of our other wonderful EU content creators to do the weekday one during the month. So I'll coordinate with them. So there will always be two per month. There will be two EU time zone and two NA time zone new player tournaments. But I'm thinking with the jobs, I'm going to go to half of them. One in each time zone being on the weekend one each time zone being on the weekday to try and accommodate people's different schedules but also acknowledging the reality of my changed life circumstances because i just have a lot less flexibility on when i can like come home stream go back to work as soon as the stream's over like i used to do i can't do that um 
So last week I hosted it on the last day I had before I went to work, Tuesday. And then I've been at work at this new job since Wednesday of last week. So I just completed my first week at this job. And now we're back in the NA time zone so I can come home and do it. So that's the answer to your question. Uh, it's very much in flux, but I am trying to flip back and forth between new player, uh, sorry, uh, EU and NA, and also between weekends and stuff. Liam, how do you join? And then we'll start casting this game right here. Uh, if you go onto my Discord, you can go to the landing zone. That'll work. That's where you get dropped. Uh, you hop into give rat ogre roll, request the rat ogre roll that'll let you join the new player chats and it'll let you sign up for new player tournaments. Every week in tournaments, I will post something that looks like this. It'll say there are land battles at this night and this time. Go to that total tavern page and sign up. Sound good? Sound good. All right, we have a game in front of us. Let's get to casting it. Tequila Sunset, Night Hoods here, and Raksha. Kudos to the new gate. Yeah, this tournament already started. But there, we host one every single week. Every single week. All right. But enough. Enough about all that. We got... We got these two in front of us, and it would be a darn shame for them if we didn't cast their game, if instead I was just talking to you all during it. So uh, we're going to focus up. We have dwarves. This is not Thrones of Decay dwarves. This is original dwarves with two cannons, Thoric, Ironbrow, and then a bunch of Thunderers. Iron Drake Trollhammer Torpedoes, Iron Drake's regular, some Slayers, and some Dwarf Warriors in the front line. The other side for Turtle Punch on the Vampire Counts. I don't think I said it, but this is the best on our Dwarves. Um, for Turtle Punch, Vampire Counts, we have Cairn Wraiths, Konigstein Stalkers, Skeleton Warriors, Zombies, Vargeis, a Mortis Engine, some Crypt Horrors, Feasters in the Dusk, a Banshee, which Banshees are fine now versus Dwarves, High Armor Piercing, they have frostbite and stuff like that, but uh, you'd be a little careful. They don't want to fight Thoric directly because he applies magic damage. And then we have a, the Red Duke. Ooh, the Red Duke? Why? He has El Seif, his potion of strength, then his summon, and his heal. Hmm. Wild. Thank you for helping keeping the multiplayer scene alive. Yes, yes. Thanks, Sean Youngs. Thank you. What about Ulrika on the Dwarf roster? Please ban. I have not experimented with it at all. I haven't even seen it. Because with my free LC access, I think I just missed it because my brain is used to blocking out Ulrika. Because I see Gotrick and Felix and I just know Ulrika's there. So if she was there in the free LC, then I missed it. And I, like I said, I either don't have access to the DLC or I haven't opened it. And I'm not allowed to talk about that stuff yet because my embargo hasn't dropped, but I, I haven't... I have spent zero seconds looking at the DLC. People were messaging me at work today. Right now, the vampire counts are just advancing slowly. You're not missing anything, right? I'll focus up when they get closer. But I was at work today, and people were texting me stuff like, Oh, did you see this on, like, Milk and Cookies channel? Like, oh, this this looks crazy. Have you seen, like, this unit? I'm like, literally, no. You know more about this unit you're talking about than I do, because I'm not watching what you're watching, and I don't have access. <laughs> I know about a lot of the free LC stuff. I don't know shit about the DLC. <laughs> okay. So the vampire counts continue to walk up, and the dwarves are more than happy to let them take their time walking up here. So all the vampire counts are setting up a good surround, and this is a good thing to do when you're playing the vampire counts. Patience is your best friend. If you kind of walk into range with stuff too quickly and then your flanks aren't set up, the dwarves can just kill everything in front of them, then turn and kill everything on the sides. So this is correct, but it is just a little agonizing. And the dwarves are more than happy to sit here with double cannons and fire away. Vargeists have tried to land and hide behind some trees, and it is kind of helping. But they've already taken a lot of damage, and the Red Duke is also getting poked down. So vampire counts aren't advancing for free, but this is the nature of things. If you get too panicky, if you advance too quickly, you'll lose these zombies before the crypt, or, uh, the crypt ghouls and zombies on the sides are ready to go. How does Winds of Magic and Rune work? You just get both. That's actually, wait, that's a good question because they take up the same spot. You're right, I, I had never thought of that. You probably can just rotate it like Manfred's Winds of Death and uh, Winds of Vampires, where there's probably just a little ticker. Anyway, 
Nice stuff here from Turtle Punch moving up, throwing down a Skeleton Warrior Summon so it actually does damage onto the cannons. Though I must say that was a bit of a whoopsie. Overcasting Invocation, heck, I don't believe... Someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe Overcasting Invocation actually increases the heal. I think it just makes it AoE, which doesn't help anybody besides him. Nice breath attack on the Thunders who are under attack by the zombies, but the front line of the Vampire Counts has already faded away. Now, this was a good screen for the Mortis Engine and Grave Guards to get in here, but the Red Duke needs to back off and heal some more while his uh, his other forces get involved. He's taking too much poke and he needs to move. He is moving, but he's moving tangentially, not away, so he's just going to get shot as he goes. Now he's starting to get away from here, and one cannon is turning to try and finish him off. He can maybe land in the trees, cast an undercast invocation to heck on himself, and be okay. Vampire Counts are just getting into the game for now, and they are 4,000 damage value behind. That is more damage value behind than you want to be. Like, as Vampire Counts, you know you're going to go down early, but this is really far down. We'll see what they can do. Mortis Engine also taking a lot of punishment. And this can be a tough matchup for the Vampire Counts, but when they do win it, I usually see them, like, taking four of our guys and just abusing the shit out of, like cycle charging and heal capping them and things like that but right now the vampire count's getting brutalized all of a sudden the game grinds to a halt at four minutes and 42 seconds so it looks like a player is about to drop is usually when something's going fine like that and then it just slams to a halt usually it's going to say like blank and blank has left the game or blank and blank has dropped from the lobby and that's really annoying i do feel like in the last four or five months live games there it is I feel like live games have been getting less stable, and I don't know why. Because, like, Warhammer 2 had lag issues sometimes, but I feel like Warhammer 3 is just, like, straight up unstable. I don't know why that is. Um, I, I think Turtle Punch was too far behind to come back. I can leave it to the players, but, like, I I don't know what he was going to do there. He was down 5,000-plus damage value. He had some Grave Guard, but that wasn't going to be enough to, like, drag the game back, I don't think. All right, Turtle Punch said he crashed. It wasn't like a lag thing. Uh, Liam asked for the Rat Ogre roll. I suppose I can give it to him. All right. Uh, we need a round two person, and then uh, I'm going to let you guys in on a little... A little treat. A little something. Dog Ruler, if you're in chat, can we spectate your round two? Dog Ruler, Dog Ruler. It's been a while since I messaged them. Okay, you guys want to see something I've been working on? A little behind the scenes stuff. This is uh, not. This is not finalized yet. should be it. So I need a right screen? Yeah.
So that's fun. Um, so that's not finalized. I did preface that before showing you the trailer. It's not finalized yet. Uh, we're still working on... The event is finalized. The Warpstone Cup is happening. It's ready to go. We know the structure of the tournament. I'm hoping to get that trailer done and released by this week. Um... But I had some notes from my admins on like a couple things to edit about it, which aren't worth going into here. So I'm gonna, um, you know, I'm gonna make those changes, see what we can do there, and get the date set down. We're not sure. I'm pretty sure it's gonna start May 18th, but there's we are still in discussion about it, me and my admin team, and some of them are saying like. Maybe we should do May 26th or something like that. So n just nothing in that is completely set in stone, but it's like 90% there. Um, but yeah, it's it's uh, our version of... Do you, does anybody here remember the Warhammer World Cup? It's just a world championship for Warhammer stuff. We haven't had like a big super hype tournament like that. So I wanted to do something... But we wanted to avoid just like a hard cash prize because that can get that can get kind of shady. Like we've had some issues with it in the past. Um, so we took about a thousand bucks and we're doing Steam money. So you have to have a Steam account that we can link to. Prevents some like Discord smurfing or whatever because like, you know, if Coops wins the whole thing and then I ask for his steam information and he's like alfredino at alfredino.com that I'm like I don't think that was coops um so we got some steam money uh we got the plushies and then we have an actual physical trophy um where is my camera so while the round two loads up uh So like I have the trophy right here. It's got Oh, dick oh, I'm backwards. Warpstone Cup Championship 2024. So there's that. And then we do have the little Gaven plushies. All four of them. There's one. I'm not gonna bother showing all four, but got a little night runner, there's a little night runner claws. So the winner picks their favorite of the four plushies. They get the largest Steam money prize, and they get the trophy. Second place will get the second choice out of the four plushies, and then they get $50 on Steam, um, so a lesser Steam prize. And then third and fourth both get $25 on Steam. And then third will pick a plushie before fourth, and the fourth gets whatever one's left. I'll ship them to you wherever you are. Things like that. Um, so it's just like a big hype tournament. There's three stages. I have a separate video about that. It's three minutes long, so I'm not going to show that here just to fill time. But um, yeah, it's it's three stages long. There will be a stage where everybody who signs up gets thrown into a giant pool through various machinations I'm not going to go into. Stage one, half people get knocked out. Stage two, at that point, we group the people who are left into time zones so that it's easier to schedule your games and then from these groups we'll get eight or 16 depending on how many people sign up eight or 16 people for a normal bracket and the normal bracket is stage three just best of fives uh live stream the games that kind of thing and ca i don't want to put words in their mouth but they have apologized for how they handled our live events we planned together in the past. We're like, I, I want to say I'm not trying to throw shade, but there's a little bit of shade because I've been like increasingly pissed off where it's like, we'll set something up. Like 
Turin sets something up with them for domination. I set something up for them with them for land battles. Now, Turin's not involved in my thing. I'm not blaming him at all, right? But Turin sets up something for domination, and they go, great, love it. What can we do? And he's like, do this, this, and this. And they're like, fucking great. I love it. Here's, you know, the early access you need. Get your players on the early access stuff, and then have an early access tournament with these players. Cool. And then, then I'm talking to them, and they're like, hey, what do you need? And I'm like, literally nothing just if you could promote it on your social medias that'd be fine but i got everything else handled and they go got it great sweet and then the date's coming up and they're like hey human boy listen we're gonna have to cancel the thing some stuff came up and i'm like what stuff came up you're not doing anything here all i need from you is a fucking tweet that it's happening like whatever so that's happened to me with them like three times this time eh. They're like, listen, we know we fucked you three different times, but the fourth time, we got you. So, allegedly, they want to stream this on their Total War platform. Allegedly. Or, if they don't do that, allegedly, they'll promote it. Do I believe it? Past says no, but I'm not just going to say fuck you, like... I could use their help, I could use the outreach, I could use all these things. So, you know, I'll go into it with good faith, and I'll do whatever they need me to do, but I'm not going to sit here and be like, GUYS, THEY SAID THEY MEAN IT THIS TIME! <laughs> I also am a little jaded. <laughs> but, like, here's the thing, if they pull through, I'll sing their praises all day long. I'll call a spade a spade, but then it goes both ways. If you fuck me over four times in a row, like we're currently on strike three, I'm going to tell you that you fucked me over three times in a row, right? But if you come through, then yeah, I'll, I'll totally give you credit for coming through. It'd be hype to work with CA. So we'll see. Um, they've indicated in the past that they really would like Turin or a bigger streamer than me to be on board with the project, which makes sense. Um, so if they greenlight this, I can reach out to Turin, but I really don't want to spend my time uh harassing turin who's got his own shit going on and like hey man hey it's me human boy yes yes eight thousand subscribers i'm gonna go get the biggest bestest tournament and ca is gonna do this thing and you and me should set up a time to like co-stream and go through all the details and then like if he says sure then i gotta go back to him like a month later and be like CA said no. So I'm getting, I'm like, all right, CA, like you and I figure this out. If you're fucking serious, I'll go get Turin, but I'm not going to waste Turin's time because you're wasting my time. <laughs> and Turin's got his own shit going on. Like, you know. I, not a lot of it's secret, but it's also not my news to share. So if you're curious, go to his website, Total Tavern. And if you peek around for like 15 seconds, you might figure out that he has his own shit going on. But. When is the next tournament? Every week, Liam. Every goddamn week. Oh, bye, Liam. You have almost 9k subs. Yeah. That's true. Like, I'm not tiny anymore, which is why CA even bothers answering my calls, but, like, I'm also not large enough that I draw an audience that doesn't already... that they don't already have. You know what I mean? Where, like, Turin's audience is so big that there are people who don't know Thrones of Decay is even happening, and they tune into Turin and hear him talk about it, like, oh, cool, I might get back into Warhammer. I'm not that big. My channel is definitely people that fucking know. <laughs> they, they know Thrones is coming. So I'm not really, like, a big marketing guy, which is why they don't do as much early access stuff with me. That just makes sense. I'm not really that bitter about that. It's like, you know, yeah. You want to do more stuff with Turin, Milk and Cookies, Zerkovich. Like, people that actually tell more audience members to go buy your game. I get that. Alright, what are we doing? What's happening here? We have Taurusin and Dog Ruler. Dog Ruler on the Lizardmen. We have some Skink Cohorts, some Soros Warriors, Skink Skirmishers, Skink Cohorts with Javelins. 
We have a solar engine bestilled on, which have been coming uh, more popular as of late. I won't say that they're good, but they're not bad. They're not bad. They're definitely more supportive. In Warhammer 2, their Pokey Poke laser actually did damage. Now it's like they're pure support. Blinded effect, fire to reduce healing. Um, they have a vigor per second aura around them. They're just like a good little support unit. A Quaddle up in the sky. I still think that unit's trash, but uh, sure. And then a Solid Mage Priest of High with Apotheosis and Soul Quench. And then his Bound Banishment. Now, side for the Empire, this is not Thrones of Decay. This is pre Thrones of Decay. A basic Hellstorm rocket battery, three handgunners, three handgunners, two archers. Oh, this is just basic archers. Two Demi Knights with halberds. Some halberdiers and spearmen on the front line. Balthazar Gelt up in the sky with Final Station and Searing Doom. And then we do have the Death Jacks in the distance that are now in combat with some Skinka cohorts. And rest in peace, little de Death Jacks. Rest in peace. Though they might be able to fight okay against Skink Skirmishers. Not like either of them is a good melee combatant, but still probably going to be bad for them. Oof. Two bound spells. The lightning from... The chain lightning from uh, the Quaddle and the banishment from the handgunners. Re uh, from the handgunners, yes. The banishment from the salon really punishing the handgunners' tight formation here since they weren't deployed in a super thin line. If you ever see in multiplayer people constantly deploying in super, super thin lines and you wonder why, that's why. It makes you a lot less susceptible to spells and ranged fire in general. Searing Doom is out from Gelt trying to bail out the Empire's front line from the shellacking they're taking, but already we're getting close to terror routes. If the Quaddle dives in here, it would terror out off two of these spearmen. Halberdier is taking a lot of damage from spells on the way in. And yeah, it's a really good start here from Dog Ruler. Though Tar Taurusin is actually up in damage value. That's not shocking. I'd rather be Dog Ruler in this situation. Damage Knights with Halberds out, in the, out and about, fighting Skink Skirmishers and Feral Cold Ones. They'll win it, but at what cost? As you can see, they have taken a horrendous amount of damage. Is it the Skirmishers? No, what got this much value on them? Oh, there's a different Feral Cold One that already shattered. Okay, so they've been fighting a 3v1. Yeah, that's how they did that much. In comes the Quaddle. Big Final Transmutation doesn't hit any single entities of the Lizardmen that you would usually want Final Transmutation to hit, but it did hit four units in general, including the Quaddle of Bottles. It's not a bad cast. Archers and handgunners trying to rally and fire into the area. Quaddles are super resistant to missile fire, not just because of their missile resistance, which is 25%, but they're super snaky bodies make a lot of missiles miss them. So unfortunately, they're gonna need some Demigriff Knights or something to bail the archers out of the situation. Ranged fire itself is not gonna take care of the quad. Demigriff Knights are busy on their own though. They do surround and beat up on the Bastildon solar engine. And since he is all alone, they're an anti-large armor piercing cav, they're gonna, they're gonna mess him up. They're gonna mess him up real good. It'll still take a long time. Bastildons are tanky. So, so tanky, but they'll win eventually. Slon does have a bit of healing with his Apotheosis. He can throw towards the Court of Waddle here and there. The Empire State Troops are holding for now, though I think a second banishment's going to be coming out, and it's probably going to land right here. The Bound Banishment of Slon's probably going to hit that Halberdier. And this is a live game, so if that comes true, I couldn't possibly have watched the replay ahead of time, because this is there isn't a replay. So, yeah, if there's a banishment right there, fuck you. I was right. If there's not, then fuck you. I was still right. What is that? Oh, Soul Quench. Thank you. I thought that was a banishment. I was like, no, my prediction! Quaddle is taking some damage here and there. Still on Solar Engine is going to get away from the Demon Knights, though, and now suppress those guys with skings. What was that? That's a bound lightning bolt from the Quaddle. No, that's a Seer Doom from Gelt. Oh, I guess it did hit a lot of Saurus. It looked like it was aimed just at the Spearman, but I think that... <gasps> what is it? What is it? Is it a banishment? It's a banishment! Fuck you! Fuck you! I know what's going on. I know what's happening. I have rat brain. Rat brain better than human brain. Take that. I knew where the banishment was coming down. I'm a genius. I mean, it was a blob in the front line that he could shut up. <laughs> it's just, just like, let me have this. Armor of Quetzal giving the Quaddle 100 armor to further help him just deal with the archers. Handgunners are poking him down steadily. Now, the Demigriff Knights, one of them is finally routing as the Court of Waddle plus some Saurus deal with him. The other one is completely bogged down in various Lizardmen. Some Saurus in here, though they aren't Spears, and then random Skinks, and the Solar Engine is going to get away. If the Solar Engine can manage to turn around and fire into the Demigriff Knights and just further lower their stats, that would be pretty huge. It looks like instead it's going to go for trying to snipe out Gelt. 
Though the shot did hit the Spearman with shields, it gets them to terror out, so it's not the worst thing in the world. But now you're once again beset by the down defense with Halberds, and we'll see if you can get to any modicum of safety. That's a full health source warrior. Where has that been all game? Oh shit. Okay. Well, it's it's joining the fight now. Again, if the Bastildon can just run away as it is, so nice job there from Dog Ruler. Getting back through his skinks to the Demkonites with the Halberds uh, do terror out before that is a problem. Torsen is up. 2,000 damage value, but he's behind the balance of power, and I actually do agree with that balance of power. A full health Soros, plus a Slan who's still alive, plus a Bastildon with a lot of ammunition left, he can really stall this game out. I think what Gelt needs to do is Gelt needs a clutch final transmutation. What is that? Oh, it's Searing Doom onto a skin cohort. Okay. But anyway, uh, final transmutation to finish off the Bastildon or the Quaddle, either one. You can't let them keep apotheosising up. Or he's going to need to Soul Quench win a Rye. He's going to need to also Searing Doom the Source Warriors. So Gelt's magic usage is going to be of utmost importance. Where was this full health Reichsguard all game? Okay. All right. A little hope for the Empires. They are getting some Demigriff Knights back. We still have a lot of Reichsguard. Can the wounded single entities of Lizardmen hold on long enough for the Source to carry... Or will the Empire's tattered remains and their very healthy mage be enough to close this out? Handgunners get a really good volley on just as the Apotheosis is coming in. Can the Reichsguard route the Solar Engine? It doesn't look like it. The Solar Engine does get a leadership buff from the Shield, the old ones, but also it is perfect vigor due to its own aura, and it's immune to flanking due to the one of the recent buffs the Lizardmen got. They really didn't need it. Is Final Trons even worth it against tanky as spawns? It is if you commit to, like, sniping them. If you're just going to throw one out for fun, then no, because they'll just heal it right back up, right? Fourth quarter reinforcement for both sides. Yeah, dude. All right, Reichsguard is still fighting out. In come the Demigriff Knights with their Halberds. They will get some decent damage, but that Bastildon's back up to about 1,000 HP, and another Apotheosis comes in. And this game is just the perfect example of how to not fight healing is spreading out your damage. The Slon's almost dead. The Bastildon's almost dead. The Quaddle's almost dead. But none of them are actually dead. <laughs> and they all just keep healing up whenever they're actually about to get sniped out. Big overcasted Searing Doom onto the Saurus Warriors. Get some decent damage. But Gelt does not have the Winds of Magic for a final transmutation that he desperately needs. He really needed to focus on throwing out a final trance at some of these single entities and actually killing them so they can't just keep getting healed every couple of seconds that being said man the the slot is is pissing through winds of magic i don't know how many apotheoses he has left because he's been throwing out soul quenches on cooldown too it's not like he just has apotheoses out but like gelt doesn't have anybody left backing him up it is just him and these almost dead demigriff knights the reichsguard i guess are technically still alive i thought they're routing i guess it was just terror routing The Skink Skirmishers poke away the Demigriff Knights with the Halberds. Source Warriors is still almost full health. We still haven't, uh... Still haven't seen a Final Trans in a while. We do see Searing Dooms almost on cooldown, so I just have to imagine that that's where his Winds of Magic is going, and that Torsen's not sitting on, like, 30 Winds of Magic for an overcasted Final Trans out of nowhere. Gelt's trying to land in the Quaddle and get rid of him once and for all. Shield the Old Ones will save his leadership for now. Without it, he would have routed already, but it can't save him forever. He does eventually route... And the Solar Engine still has three shots left to keep firing into these Reichsguard. What up, unused username? Looks like Gelt is not going to try and chase down the Quaddle. He's trying to get back up into the sky now. Source Warriors are out of position again, though. Can Gelt and the boys abuse this dereliction of duty as the as the Source are nowhere near their Slon or the Bastilladon? Slon gets surrounded by the Reichsguard, and the Slon doesn't cause terrors. These guys aren't going to terror out anytime soon. For now. They could naturally route. They're going to terror out. And Gelt actually takes the fight to the Solar Engine himself. Coldblood is going to keep that in the fight. But does the Slon end up needing his Halberdiers are also joining the area? Skinks are getting a rear charge. Army losses is taking the Empires. The Solar Engine kicks Gelt's ass with its perfect vigor. Doesn't give a single shit. I'm just checking some things. I'm just checking some things. 
Don't you guys worry about nothing. Okay, Slon Mage Priest of High Magic, only 1400 value, so not insane, but still pretty good. Quaddle 1450, that is really good. I think that's making the Quaddle pay for itself, which is hard to do. Solar Engine paid for itself and then some while providing that supportive buff. Um, so good shit there from Dog Ruler. Their Soros Warrior is specifically that full health one. We saw it get out of position a couple times, so that's a bit of a whoopsie. The rest of their build was played pretty fine, but that Soros specifically getting caught out of position so many times was a big problem. Um, other than that, they played their build well. It's it's a it's a fun build. I don't know if it's like a super meta effective build. Soros Warriors in general aren't that great versus Empire, because Empire's frontline isn't one you need Soros to beat. And you kind of need to pressure their range stuff faster, but it's a fun build, and they played it overall pretty well. Praetorazid, different types of Halberds did alright. Gelt did alright. Reichsguard did fine. I don't know where they went in the mid-game. In the late game, they came back to help out. Handgunners all did well. Hellstorm Rock Battery for not being the Sunmaker actually did pretty good. Death Jacks were a bit of a meme. And then Halberdiers and Spearmen did, held their best. And the other archers, the one that got to shoot for quite a long time doubled its value, but the other ones, not really. Uh, Huntsmen are probably better. And then spreading your handgunners into line formations so that the Thunderbolt and stuff doesn't just instantly fuck them would probably help you in the future. I think the Empire build was more competitive than the Elizabeth build, but I think Dog Ruler just, like, positioned their units a bit better. Because, like, that square formation is so brutal for the amount of damage you're going to take from damaging spells. Gelt Searing Dooms were alright. I would have preferred a Final Transmutation, but it's not, like, objectively wrong. That one's just a preference thing. His Searing Dooms were fine. They were on point. They got a lot of good hits in and stuff, so... Yeah. Lizardmen looking a little underpowered. They need maybe need a buff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I agree with you. I'm not going to read your follow-up message about that being a joke. I'm going to take you seriously. This is one of the most cozy streams on the YouTube. Do I need to go get a blanket or something? I feel like I'm not being cozy enough. Okay. Where did I save those that Fat Kid was sending me? And his name's Fat Kid. I'm not just, like, calling somebody out for no reason. <laughs> All right. Okay, they're not saved in my replay folder. Cool, cool. I'm going to start casting some replays people have sent me. Uh, the first two rounds live were mostly just to buy time while we waited for some replays to come in. Why do YouTubers cringe when ogres beat Empire? I don't know. That seems fine to me. Why? Who's cringing about it? Ogres are a good faction. They're allowed to win things. Okay. We're getting some replays in. We'll cast some of them. Empire vs. Lizardmen? We literally just cast that matchup. But it is a bit different. So I'll go see if his second one's a little different. Yeah, okay, this is... This is different. Get another replay of Turtle Punch, but this is our first fat kid of the night. See, his name's right there. I'm not... I'm not being a dick. It's right there. Dov? Oh. That's because Dov sucks. <laughs> Somewhere... Somewhere, Dov just, like, spilled his drink and was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I thought we were good. And I'm like, nah, dude. All right. Overall, you're just good. Hell yeah, unnamed, unused username. This is the kind of support we like to hear. Okay, so Fat Kid's out here breaking rules in a new player tournament. 
fat kid. What's that about? Now, to be fair, this is a rule I have also broken in the past, but for anybody who cares, in new play turns, we are more chill about the rules, just an FYI. Incarnate Elemental Beast has a constant uh, damage effect. Jabberscythe also has a constant damage effect, with the caveat that you're below it a certain leadership threshold, but they both count as constant damage effects. You might wonder who cares about that kind of thing. There has never been a game with two different draining effects that was a fun time for anyone involved, so tournaments usually just ban them for the sake of all of our sanity. But, um... Yeah, a lot of people forget about the Jabber Scythes one because they just want it for the charge animations. Anyway, moving on. For the Beastmen, we have four Ungor Raiders, a bunch of Ungor Spearmen Herds and Ungor Herds cross the front line, triple Zongors for some backup, two Harpies, Malagor Dark Omen with only Flock of Doom, and then an Incarnate Elemental Beast and a Jabber Scythe. What up, Wicked? On the other side, we have Wolfric the Wanderer. On his Mammoth with Hunter of Champions, Sea Fang, and Fight or Die. And then we have some Marauder Champions and Icehorn Marauders. Marauder Champions is great weapons. More Marauder Champions. And then some Trolls, some Skin Wolves, some Javs, a Firecaster, and Warhounds. That is an insanely elite front line. All Marauder Champions all day as Sea Fang tears through two stacked up units. Ow! But I must say, Norska is probably going to lose this because having four elite infantry against uh, two Mortis engines is going to be really bad. Plus Flock of Doom. Marauder Horsemen and Dogs need to get into the fight with this Harpy. Currently the dogs are walking back. I don't know why they're walking. I think if there's a key you use, they start walking, but that's pretty bad. Another big burning head will go through the lines. Takes out an Ungor Raider and an Ungor Herd that were stacked on top of each other. Starts to curve its way back through another Ungor Raider and an Ungor Herd. Oh, it's so much damage <laughs> as the beasts are just getting fucked across the board. <laughs> and they're pushed back. Marauder Champions pushing through like nobody's business. On the other side, Skin Wolves are fighting Ungor Spearmen Herds without support. They will need support soon, either in the form of some of these Marauder Champions or a Burning Head or something. But Harpies have now isolated the Shaman Sorcerer of Fire. What can Wolfric do? Wolfric says, that's not my problem. And just leaves them. <laughs> Fuck those Skin Wolves. <laughs> Fuck that Sorcerer. I ain't going near the Incarnate or the Jabber Scythe. As he starts to get more and more Beastmen to tear around. Now the problem with this... The problem with a lot of heavy infantry builds is without the dogs nearby, routing the beastmen means nothing. They're all r rallying in the backfield. They're going to turn around and start firing or rejoining the fight. Whatever, the dogs need to be back here and sweeping up everybody that routes away. The Incarnate Elemental Beast did take some serious damage in the fighting, but with the charge and the Jabber Scythe from the broader champions, these guys are getting drained down double fast right now. They're not enjoying it whatsoever. The Firecaster did get away from the Harpies for now, hiding in some basic Marauders. He has Marauder Horsemen nearby that can help him out. Here come the dogs, finally sweeping into the back line. This could be big trouble for the Beastmen. Hey, Turtle Punch is in the chat. What up, dude? How you doing? So Wolfric is actually going to beat up on this Incarnate because, uh... The Incarnate is having a way worse time than I would have imagined. Like, I thought he'd just be fine and chilling, but he's he's not doing that at all. He's having a terrible day. Dogs are back here eating up Beastmen like we would hope. Ice Home Marauders also trying to keep these Ungor Raiders routing and stuff, so... Good things for Norska on the backfield. Good things on the front line. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. With the two single entities trying to chase down Wolfric the Wanderer, he is taking pretty decent damage. On a Mammoth, he has a gigantic health pool, don't get me wrong, but it ain't coming back. He has no healing whatsoever. Throws down a quick Flaming Sword of Ruin onto the Norse Controls and Wolfric. Mm, neither of these units have any healings. It's not like the damage changes, but... Uh, ooh, yeah, you can get through the physical resistance of the Incarnate Elemental Beast, plus with that uh, Javelin Fire going over the top, he might start that uh, crumbling. Is he demonic instability, or is he a construct? He's demonic, so he just, he just dies. Okay, no Incarnate. He's down to just Malagor and the Jabber Scythe. And yeah, Norska's got it. I must say, on loading in with the builds, I really didn't think Norska had the teeth in him. But the double Mortis Engines didn't do as much versus the Marauder Frontline as I would have expected. And then there was that nasty fucking Burning Head that hit like four units and a Sea Fang that hit two more. So you take out almost 
six infantry units at the start of the game, and yeah, that's going to have an effect. Jabber Scythe is now getting pushed around by North Skin Ice Trolls. North Controls and Skin Walk. And the dog play, the dogs weren't where I wanted them to be at the very start of the game, but after that, it's been really good. This is exactly what you want to be doing with your dogs. It's just running around the back line and making sure nothing ever comes back ever. It's super important versus leadership factions. Does Festus count as constant? Uh, yeah, we just count them as constant because, like, you really don't want to be policing people mid-game, like, watching them specifically and, like, did you ever flip over to your damage one? It's like, we try and make things very simple. So, yeah. And it's a new player tournament. We're being chill. But I do, like, it is my job to point them out so that if you take them in a game that's in a more high-stakes environment, like, the Warpstone Cup World Championship thing we announced earlier in the stream. If you make a rule break there, people are going to get genuinely mad about it. So, like, I'll tell you the rules in a low-stakes environment so you can learn them when everyone's just kind of vibing. And then you can take that with you to high-stakes areas. Oh, my God! <laughs> okay, that's where the Incarnate's HP went. 2,300 on the Modern Hunter Javelin. <laughs> it did twice as much as Wolfric on his man man. Oh my god. The, the Marauder Hunter Javelin in the background just carrying the game. Don't worry about it, guys. I got this one. That's so funny. Alright, GG's, lads. GG's. We have DeBess and Out there. For anyone who cares, players are entering uh, round three right now. Round three out of four. So we're about halfway done with the first part of the tournament, and then if there's any ties, we'll break those later. So moving along. DeBess on uh, the dwarves. I will announce it for like the 90th time, but just show everybody's on the same page. These are not Thrones of Decay Dwarves, these are pre-reworked Dwarves. Dwarf Warriors, the long beards, long beards with great weapons across the front line. That front line is never gonna break. We also have a Thunderer, Iron Drake, Trollhammer, Torpedoes, some Corollers, some Slayers, and Triple Cannon. Really like Triple Cannon versus Chaos Dwarves. Chaos Dwarves hate dealing with cannons. On the other side for the Chaos Dwarves, we have two Bull Centaur Renders, two Deathstreaker Rock Launchers, a single blunderbuss, and then a front line of Chaos Dwarf Warriors, an Astragoth Iron Hand with his Hellhammer and a Cascading Fire Cloak. But uh, yeah, this is the problem with fighting any faction that has good single target cannons. Whether it's Cathay or Dwarves or Empire after the rework, you're going to have a bad time. You're going to did done darned have a bad time. Sorry, someone's messaging me about the tournament, so I'm just responding him quick. Okay, refocusing. We have already lost one Deathstreak Rock Launcher and immediately switching on to the other one. It's down to half HP. Now, they are firing back. They've got this cannon down to two models, this cannon down to two models. That one's still at four. Definitely a worthwhile trade for the Dwarves. It's not like the Deathstreakers are going out without a fight, but they're just completely outmatched here. So we'll watch some more cannons hit it. That slight downhill angle is helping them out quite a bit. Because this cannon is now down to one model left. Bull Centaur Renders can do okay in this matchup if they can avoid the Slayers. Or if they can get a charge onto the Slayers. But if they actually like sit and fight the Slayers for any amount of time, they're going to just really suffer. Deathstreaker is now routing. It should rally, and honestly getting itself into the trees might save it quite a lot of hurt. The Dwarven Cannons, out of the 12 models they started with, they are down to 7. So, it's it's something. Full Centaur Render is trying to creep through the back line. With 62 speed, they should be fine, but you never know. Sometimes their models do janky things as they get shot by Trollhammer Torpedoes on their way in. Where's the other Render? The other Render's just running around doing what he can for now. 
Cannon with two models left is knocked off line. That's an organ gun! That's an organ gun! That's not a cannon at all! What the hell? Why Why would you bring an organ gun? And Astrogoth's beating the shit out of Thoric. Oh, but as I say that, there goes the Bull Centaur Render, just deleted in their prime. Now surrounded by Slayers, getting shot on all sides. Oh, if they are gone. The Organ Gun's still trying to fire, though it is obstructed here and there. Bull Centaur Renders dive into the Trollhammer Torpedoes. They'll do really, really good damage to Trollhammers. Trollhammers are only tanky because they're low model count and high armor values, but they're super low HP and low melee defense, means they're not going to do well against Bull Centaur Renders. Deathstrike Rock Launcher is back and is now firing spread ammunition to the Corollers. Realizing it can't really do too much against the cannons, it's just going to lose that duel over time. It is doing what it can and where it can. And Astrogoth is still trouncing Thoric with a Hellhammer going down the line, hitting like fully one Longbeard, but kind of tickling another Dwarf Warrior. And the Chaos Dwarves, very disadvantaged from the build phase, but since then they've been playing pretty darn well. Is that Deathstrike are still doing good stuff? Yeah, I Meow, mean, I love you too, buddy. Hi, Head Crab Farmer. Head Crab Farmer, have we, have we ever talked? Are we friends? Bull Centaur Renders, the one that didn't get instantly destroyed, is being rather cheeky with its time. And the Death Shrieker has held on for quite a while. Now the single cannon is still trying to shoot him. Where's the other cannon aiming? Other cannon is just repositioning, but now that it's in the trees, it's much harder to hit. And Astrogoth, he was once doing amazingly well versus Thoric. He has since kind of teetered off. Petered off? Petered off. And now a cannon shooting him in the face, and the Iron Drakes are shooting him in the face. And Astrogoth gets melted before our eyes, pushed away, and the Chaos Dwarves are all of a sudden way behind on the balance of power. Their front line is holding for now, but it's not exactly winning. It is largely on the Bull Centaur renders to win. They're just not really doing enough. Deathstrike Punch is trying to help out the Bull Centaur Renders, punish this little blob of very expensive dwarves and let the, the Bull Centaur Renders get away from the Slayers, but it's still taking too long to kill the dwarves. They're not getting anywhere with it. Cannons have repositioned. They fire into the trees, take out the Death Shrieker at last, killing it. And we'll see. They should, yeah, they're doing the exact right thing. Now just shoot at Astrogoth. Even if you can't kill him, just like putting him under artillery fire the rest of the game will keep him routing. And that'll probably win you the game. Hellhammer down the side. Dwarf Warrior does manage to dodge it, but the long beard takes a little bit of damage. And this cannon shot should end the game. Oh! Oh! Two predictions in one night! How can he do it? Has he watched literally thousands upon thousands upon thousands of replays and generally gets an idea when army losses is about to hit? Or is he psychic? It's clearly the second one. He's clearly psychic. Organ gun, not a lot of value. Cannons, a lot of value. Troll hammer torpedoes, a lot of value. Slayers, decent value considering they're still full HP. Thunders and Longbeards and Quarrelers did fine. They did fine. Thor did fine. For out there, Astrogoth did all right. Bull Center Renders got rolled. Destrick Rock Launchers, one got rolled. The other one did okay. And then Castor Forest was just like, Thor, we did our bit. We got on the front line. We didn't die. Where were the rest of you? But the best is my friend. The best is a good friend to have. He's a good friend to have. We cast, what did we cast? One or two of your games, the best. I feel like we cast a couple games. Of the boy, the lad. Okay, we have a replay from out there. So I'm gathering up some replays for people. Gathering up some stuff. As some people are entering round four, let's continue on. Dr. Nerd was very excited about this game between him and Fat Kid at recess. Roma never know. You should play on a CRT monitor. What's a CRT monitor? Fat Kid at Recess versus NC Skaven's Greatest Best Yes Yes, which is also known as Dr. Nerd. For the extremely astute of you, you might remember that Dr. Nerd did in fact win one of these before. And uh, people, you know, I, I said, your prize for winning this is a Bone Ripper roll, which is like, hey, cool, you have a Bone Ripper roll, you feel cool about yourself, but it also stops you from playing new player tournaments. Why is Dr. Nerd here? Uh, he took a long break from playing, like, grinding. 
uh, I believe, for some form of schooling. I don't remember what level, and I'm also not trying to DDoS him, so... He took a break from the game, and now he's back, and also, he did win playing a certain style, and when we had discussed him playing in these again, he did want to switch it up and try different styles, but when he switches up and tries different styles, he would lose a lot in try-hard tournaments, so he kind of wanted a nice space to do that. And I was like, okay, sure. So, we're pretty chill about it. But for anybody out there who's like, wait, didn't Dr. Nerd win one? Yeah, we discussed it. It's fine. I talked with the admin of these tournaments, and uh, he was fine with it. <laughs> who's the admin? It's me. That's the joke. I was fine with it. All right. Bum, bum, bum. What do we have? Demon's Chaos versus Lizardman. For the Lizardman, we have a Croc score Ancient, with his Miasma of Despair for some leadership debuffs against uh, the Demons of Chaos. We have Lord Croak delivering the pizzas. And then a whole front line of Saurus, some Feral Cold Ones, but still not Arcs of Sotek. Star Chamber Guardians Temple Guard. So it's a Saurus Feral Cold One rush with Lord Croak. I'm too sad I cannot make it for this tourney. Zoom for life. We host one every week. Every week! Anyway, for the Demons of Chaos, Blue Horror Frontline, Pink Horror Secondary, some Plague Bears of Nurgle, and Exalted Bloodletters of Corn. We have a Herald of Corn with his various melee buffs. I think he has two. The Locust of Wrath, and then Revel and Slaughter. The Blue Scribes, a Skull Cannon, and some Nurglings. So for the blue scribes, to see what silly spells we can get out here as the Crocs Grinch gets hit with something. It's a Curse of Hashet. That's just a Spirit Leech, but slightly more costly. He throws down a Horn of Kygor to buff up his bros. And there goes the first pizza delivery right into the Pink Horrors of Zinch. Do they Demonic Spilly Crumbly? No, but their Blue Horror Frontline is the Ark of Sotek. Taking a lot of damage from the Pink Horrors and the Skull Cannon and stuff. We'll see. We'll see what the blue scribes can do. I thought I heard something magical happening, but I guess not. As the Herald of Corn tries to fight the Cross Ranch, and who's standing in the Star Chamber Guardians, so uh, the Herald of Corn's gonna want to be a lot more careful than he's currently being. Some form of spell is hitting the Bastildon. It's the Treason of Zinch. Minus 18, no, minus 16 leadership in an aura might get that Bastildon to route. Exalted Bloodletters are eating real good tonight. They actually could probably kill all three of these units combined. And they'll be more than happy to do so. Plague Bears will hold the front line forever, but I'm mostly concerned about this Herald of Corn, who did get in way over his head. For Fat Kid at recess, his northern flank is winning quite handedly, and he's start transferring some of that power down this way. But mostly his Herald of Corn has to get to safety. Like, if his Herald of Corn could just loop up back around here and then spend the rest of his game sitting right there, he'll be just fine. As a big old pizza, I believe that's a tier three pizza getting delivered right on Exalted Bloodletters. But their flag is a little disingenuous. Some of their models were away from it. The Herald of Corn is going to die, and that is disastrous for a Demons of Chaos army. If their leadership dips, that just makes it easier for their whole army to kill themselves with their passive. He did some decent damage to the Crocs were Ancient with the Skull Cannon poking in and all that stuff. But if the Crocs were Ancient can just survive, then they should be able to grind out the Demons. Demons not exactly known for late game. It's there go the Nurglings. Blue Horror is also thinking about leaving. What is this? Is that a frost sheet? What is that huge effect? I'm starting to get mad. What was that? <laughs> what the hell just happened? Another pizza is getting delivered right on top of these assaulted blood letters, and that's a great target because it doesn't do friendly fire. So you're just doing a bunch of damage to an extremely expensive target. Croc Scranchin getting nice and low. The Arc of Sotek is routing with only 100 HP left to it. It'll probably die, but the Skull Cannon's out of ammunition. It's going to have to dedicate to melee with one of these Saurus somewhere. That's an awful lot of spears, but that's the only way we can get ammo back. Blue Horrors are about out of ammunition. This Pink Horror still has ammunition, but now they are in melee combat. I have a hard time leaving. Exalted Blood Letters continue their rampage. With 125 kills, their Hellblade is activated, so they get even more weapon strength, which they definitely enjoy another it's a pizza coming in stop making the pizza joke I can't it's deliverance of it's a like how how could you not it's it's right there demonic disability takes some more pink horrors now the plague bears like we said are just lasting forever they don't give a single shit 
as they fight and give the Skull Cannon time to get some ammunition back. Then it can go and maybe shoot at the Croc Score Ancient. Bounce powers against the Demons of Chaos, but I'm actually not so sure about that. It depends on how the Blue Scribes are going to do spell-wise. If they roll some good spells, then they can easily win this game. If they roll dog shit, then they're going to lose. So we'll see. I have a message. Is it about this tournament? Alright, the best sent me another replay. Skull Cannon still charging off the Legion of Shakwa. Another, another Deliverance of Itza. This one is, I, th I believe this is the tier 1, the smallest one. But I think it might do enough damage to get these guys into Demonic and Stability Crumble. They're so freaking low. I guess the Skull Cannon is providing... Um... Oh, it doesn't provide any auras. Lame. Yo, Human Boy Hot Topic. When I played Lord's Troll Campaign and wanted to get Plague Monks as soon as possible, I found a Plague Monks and Plague Monks sensor don't have poison attacks like what? They do not, but Blessed with Filth is a super cheap spell in Skrulk's kit, and it's really nice to spam out for the bigger debuffs. But yes, they don't have poison damage. It is not intuitive. I swear that Blue Scribes haven't cast a spell in like 65 years. Another Deliverance of Itza is going to take out the Plague Bearer, but there was a Gaze of Mork from the Blue Scribes resetting their spells. We'll see if they can get another one to help snipe out that Crocs for Ancient. Supreme Shield, the old lunch does give him 40% damage resistance, and a curse of the bad moon goes through the Star Chamber Guardians at the worst possible time. 24 melee defense against uh, the Exalted Bloodletters? Where did those guys go? Oh, they died? Lame. I thought they were coming in, but it's just Plague Bears. Never mind. Demons are going to lose as Lord Croak and the Star Chamber Guardians prevail. Blue Scribes did not roll high on the spells, my friends. Yeah, Patrick Walker, I don't know why they don't get uh, poison, but they don't. I like Eat Zot. GG's good games, lads. Good games. Fat Kid at Recess. Is Harold overextended a bit? Blue Scribes were just kind of fun. Skull Cannon did well. Both these, all the blood, blood letters, did actually very well. Plague Bearers held forever. And the blue horror front line kind of fell apart, but that's what blue horrors do. Pink horrors are fine. For Dr. Nerd, Croak got a lot of value. His Crocs are Ancient also did quite well. Arcs of Sotek did okay, but I generally think they're just trash. But clearly these two were having a bit of fun. They are from the same clan. Um, so, you know, I don't... Survey says this wasn't the most try-hard build either could have brought. But um, I do think the Arcs of Sotek are, like, uniquely fucking terrible. Uh, Plague Monks... I, the Sensor Bearers have Contaminate. That one I know. Um, Sensor Bearers have Contaminate. Like the... Plague Claws do. Plague Monks don't. Just an FYI. Don't exit the game, that'd be bad. Okay, we have Out There versus J. We haven't got to cast any J tonight. And there's also still Goose and Fat Kid, which we haven't cast any Goose tonight, so I will cast these two games. But for now, I gotta check in on the tournament and see how we're doing. All right, people are still in round four, so we're doing good. What? How the hell? Question, how are there a hundred people here? <laughs> like, what the fuck? You're welcome. Welcome here. Also, who are you people? My average for these streams at this time of night is like 50 people. <laughs> why, why are we double that? Did someone raid and I missed it? PZA Total War and their viewers just joined. There it is. My YouTube wasn't updating for some reason. Thank you, PZA. Thank you, sir. Carrying on. We do have two great cannons for the Empire of, again, Fat Kid at Recess. I guess we're just casting his, his games today. Marcus Wolfhart with his net and both of his sniping abilities. Fate of Bune and Spirit Leech on an Amethyst Caster. And then a bunch of Spears and Halberds in the front line. 
Free Company Militia and Handgunners backing him up with some Empire Knights for a bit of blocking. Do you think multiplayer battles need a pool of equipable banners like spell resistance? Uh, I don't think they do. I think that would add a layer of complication. That would benefit the top 1% of players, but for most players, the barrier of entry is already pretty high, so I think adding further complication would be bad for them. Yeah. Brought my cousins. On the Lizardman side, we have Cold Ones, Spear Riders, Feral Cold Ones, a front line of Skink Hordes, the Javelins, four Croxagors for the front line. Skink Skirmishers, a Temple Guard way in the back, and Maz the Mundi with his Net, Heal, and Comet for spells. But he's currently not enjoying the attention of two great cannons, so he's going to stay in some trees until he is needed. In come the Croxagors, charging into Halberdiers, though with the Skinks already breaking their charge defense, at least the Croxagors get a little bit of a charge off. This is a tricky bit. Mazda's got to move up, and I think he's going to move up to this other patch of trees where he's at least in range to throw down his spells. But I wonder if he's going to be too late. The Croxcores might take more damage than it's worth while he's gone. Really good fight for Lizardman is forming on the top side of the hill. Empire Knights hate dealing with Lizardman cavalry. Even Feral Cold Ones, 450 gold cav, have armor piercing, and the Empire Knights just don't enjoy dealing with it whatsoever. So the Lizard's having some good trades on the flanks, and if they can get through the front line, this could be a very short game in Lizardman's favor. But Mazda has to get up here. He has to throw down a ruination of cities somewhere in this area that can kind of affect the front line. Though it is risky. If you throw it directly on him, if it carves back into your skinks, you're gonna lose like four or five sp uh, skinks to your own spell. One croc score has gotten through and is fighting next to these uh Free Company Militia trying to knock the Great Cannon offline, but it doesn't look like they'll be able to do it just yet. There's a Ruination of Cities straight through the Free Company Militia, poking the Handgunners a little bit and getting them to route. Big route for the Empire on the north side, allowing Lizardmen through, and that cannon will soon be shut down. And with the cannons going offline, that means Mazda is free to move up and play a little bit. As we did mention, the Feral Cold Ones and Cold Ones Spear Riders are winning on the flanks against the Empire Knights, mostly just holding them in position, but that's a value positive trade for Lizardmen, I think. Yeah, it's 1450 gold versus 1700 gold. As long as they're just holding there, that's fine. Really nice banishment onto Clustered Up stuff. Gonna get rid of a great cannon right before our Croc score is gonna route, so good job getting them offline. And the banishment actually just killed the whole crew. Oh my god. So both cannons are down. Mazda is safe. Now Marcus can keep poking at him for a bit. With Apotheosis, he should be able to just outheal Marcus's DPS. He couldn't outheal Marcus and two cannons, it's too much. Hunter Snare on the Croxors in the back line, trying to give the Free Company Militia some space to maneuver, but I feel like more Croxors are coming through. And the Skinks, like we said, they broke through the Empire front line at this point, and there's no one to stop them. The Empire Knights are busy on the flanks holding back the Lizard Tide, so it's really tough for the Empire to get its feet back under it and just sit and fire. That is a fate of Buna on the Skink Skirmishers. I disagree. I protest. I do not like that. Do not cast that expensive blue spell on that shitty of a unit. In comes the Marcus Knight. This should be good. It's a focus shot, so Mazda Mundi's lessened HP means it'll do more damage. It's a good bit of poke, but again, he can just apotheosis himself if he really needs it. He's actually just healing his uh, Croc scores for now. For the Empire, they're getting a second wind in the backfield, and they have a metric shit ton of state troops to still fall back on. Blizzardmen have taken extreme damage on their uh, advance. If the Cold One Spear Riders can get hit with a Fate of Buna or a 3... Then the Empire will be fine, but for now I worry that the uh, I worry the Empress is gonna want that Fate of Buna back. So we could use it on a better target. We have a kitty cat, everybody. You think with the cannon changes that it's gonna break for them? It's gonna break them for the Empire and Dwarves alike. No, because the Empire got some nerfs in other places. I have not played with any of the DLC units. I have not. I've played with the free LC units and the reworks. The Empires took some nerfs. My video didn't show it the best, but the Empire's uh, War Wagons are a lot less reliable at long ranges. They do most of their damage at short ranges. Um, so the Empire Cannon kind of changes how they're going to play. Because Cannons, as we just saw, are more vulnerable. So, I don't know how the DLC units are going to pan out. I still think Empire's going to be very good. I just think they'll be different. Some of their heroes are also pretty cool. Like the Witch Hunter provides a lot of really good stuff that I've been playing with quite a bit. I think if you're a member of my channel, I think you can already see one of my Empire games because they have early access, but otherwise it'll be coming out in the next few days. Spearman going to get hit with a Bound Banishment, but the Banishment doesn't go left into the Skinks. Yes, it does. It's going to take both of those units out, and actually the Skinks are worth more than the Spearmen, so a little bit of an unfortunate turn there for the Lizardmen as Mazda Mundi still taking a bit of damage. But the Empire is in Mass Retreat. 
These hand gunners they've gotten back aren't really enough to kill off the croc scores and cold and spear riders that are just rampaging through everything. The only hope for them now is if Mazda Mundi actually gets killed by Marcus Wolfhard. So what was that? What did you just cast? Net of Anatok on the Empire Knights, trying to net them in place so Mazda can get out. He is gonna, like, squiggle his way out of here. Pursued by Halberdiers, Marcus is still trying to get away and get a good shot on him. He has one focus shot left that might kill Mazda. Though, Mazda has 50% missile resist. God damn it, you stupid slon bitch. Of course you had 50% missile resist. And Marcus's focus shot just hit something right in front of him, so it was entirely wasted. It hit one or two little Croxigors. That's the end of that. Balance power is danger far away for the Empire, and I really don't think they can bring it back. There's just too much. There's too many things. Do you think they might finally buff Franz not be so rely on the healing magic? I, I think he's always going to rely on healing magic to be meta. Yeah. Until they, until they nerf healing by quite a lot, I don't think Franz is going to go without healing. Because he doesn't need a gold wizard. He already has really good armor piercing. Army losses finally hits for the Empire. Hi, Big JP. He has the cutest nose. He does have a very cute nose. He's a cute nose person. I'm getting a bunch of replays. Uh, I'll save one more of DeBess's, but we've already cast a good amount of his, so I'll, I'll have it as, like, a, if we need to fill time. But I am trying to, like I said, get around and cast everybody at least once. So this was a replay I cast to make sure I got Goose on the screen. For Goose, his croc scores didn't mixed, but he did win, so, like, no complaints there. Mazda was a good pick. Cold and Spear Riders and Feral Cold Ones. When I said that was a good trade on the sides, I meant it, man. All of his feral blank units paid for themselves, or this one didn't, but it was still, like, very, very healthy. So, feral cold ones, very good against the Empire, especially if you could take a fight that's not near Huntsman support. Fat Kid at Recess, the memer in chief himself. His Empire Knights tried to buy time. His cannons made Mazda Mundi's life hell for a little bit, but couldn't quite finish the job. And then Free Company Militia, a unit that a lot of Empire players like. So if I'm being objective, is fine. But being a shitter like I am, I hate the Free Company Militias. I think they're trash. I haven't seen them work in a long time. People who are better at Empire than me say they're good. I can acknowledge that, and I can still say, without any facts to back it up, fuck that unit's trash. Dog ruler. Okay, I did save it, but I can't see it. Why can't I see it? What if I refresh it? Oh, I can see it. Out there sent me this. Nergo! I'll cast some Nergo. Hey, buttons here. Do me and Goose have to report scores? I took Dr. Nerd spot and I can't really port it on Tavern. Uh. You don't have to, just, uh, you could ask, uh, yeah, I press buttons. You could ask, um, Goose to report it, and then I'll just know that you're, you're Dr. Nerd. But yes, you should report who wins. Ugh. Okay. First Nurgle game of the night, for the 90th time. This is not on the next patch, so this is normal Nurgle. Chaos Warrior Frontline, Double Chosen Backline, Double Exalted Plague Bearers, Two Rot Flies? No, One Rot Fly, A Herald of Nurgle of Nurgle, with Rant's Visitations and Stream of Corruption, and then some Chaos Warhounds with Poison. On the other side for Jay, we have a Feral Dread Saurian, a Frontline of Skinks, Secondary Line of Skinks, Tertiary Line of Skinks, and then is all Skinks. Everything's Skinks. We have a Life Priest, uh, a Life Slon with Regrowth and Earthblood, and then a two Sacred Crocs scores and a Temple Guard. Plague Ogres with great weapons save Nurgle. I am very excited for for the Nurgle's new stuff. Yeah. Feral Dread Saurian under attack by the Plague Bears. And the Plague Bears with their grenades and just sheer volume of fire are shredding this Dread Saurian down. He's down to half HP. One regrowth will fix all that. But for now, still good stuff. Chaos Warriors and Nurgle trying to find a fight. The Dread Saurian is going to rampage. Unless he gets cold-blooded, the Salon ability, he could just stop rampaging. But uh, it doesn't look like that's coming for him, so he's going to just route. 
Oh no, is that a Chosen and Chaos Warrior both getting hit with a Banishment? Oh ye Nurgle faithful, avert your eyes as the blessed light of Sigmar goes through them. But this is Lizardmen! Nope, Sigmar. It's the lore of Sigmar. You're wrong. Ooh, really good dog flank here though. Really, really good dog flank. Getting two skink skirmishers and they're still full HP so they can rip into the back of these guys. Herald of Nurgle taking a fight with the Slum Mage Priest of Life with an overcast of Rancid Visitations. The Feral Dreadsorian is running away. Now it's much faster than the Plague Bearers, so it's going to get to safety and come back. But right now, this is a great snipe attempt from the Nurgle player. He's getting a lot of good shit done. Now, Rotflies are a terrible unit, so they're just going to die for literally no reason without having accomplished anything. But that's because they're a terrible unit, and I hate them. And anybody who says that they're good for anything is a liar. Don't trust them. We are losing some Chaos Warriors and Nurgle. Chosen have taken some decent damage, and the Feral Dread Saurian is back. Still, though, I would rather be Nurgle than Lizardmen in this exact situation. These Chaos Warriors and Chosen, this is the first piece of criticism I can really offer the Nurgle player, is they need to stop blobbing up. They just need to move forward. Two of them fighting one skink isn't getting much done. Now, this is a replay. I didn't just cast or tell him what to do. He already did it without me, but this is too many units stuck fighting a dog shit ass random skink. Feral Dreadsorian gets a normal regrowth as Exalted Plague Bearers and Chosen continue to fight side by side. Dogs still chasing off any skinks they get their hands on, though these skinks actually just peeled. And that's going to be a nasty stream of corruption if it's overcast. It's undercast, so it's still decent damage, but not as much as I would think. This Herald of Nurgle is overextended, believe it or not. This looks like it's been going great for him, but it's about to all of a sudden not go great for him. These skinks are going to continue to poke him down, and the Herald is extremely squishy in these situations. The Salon can easily heal, heal himself up, so the, the Herald needs to just take the one and back off. Unless he has another Overcast Durant's Visitations in his back pocket right now, he needs to just take the L and leave. Because he's getting poked. Skinks have peeled for the Salon. The Feral Dread Saurian looks like it never even got hurt. It is completely fine, and it's tearing through some Chaos Warriors. Now, the Life Salon does need to give itself some affection, because as we noted, this, the, the, the Herald of Nurgle did bring Rance Visitations, and then we know how much damage he already did to the Salon, so the Salon's going to have to focus on healing itself up for a little bit. Maybe just some Earth Blood Spam next to the Feral Dread Saurian if you're insistent on it, or save up for a regrowth for yourself. Herald of Nurgle getting poked down by these little 400 gold dart skinks, and they've already paid for themselves with plenty more ammo and HP to go. And there's an Earth Blood, but not onto the Salon. That is a dire mistake, and it looks like he's going to pay for it as the Herald Nurgle dives in once again. Even if he has an undercast Rance of Visitations, you know Earth Blood's on cooldown. You know he probably doesn't have the Winds of Magic for a regrowth just yet. And that is going to be the end of the Salon. Without the Salon, the Lizardman will probably lose. A critical mistake. A little overconfident that the Salon was unkillable. Really want to start playing Total Warhammer 3 competitively, but I played 10 Empire plays a quick play and still don't have a win. Starting out is tough. Jared Walker, if you hang out till after this game, I will tell you how to win some stuff. You got this. Do dinosaurs have body odor? Yes. Yes. Have you ever smelled like a lizard? Anyway, the Herald of Nurgle is successfully walking off the Salon Mage Priest of Life. Now he's backing off, which is a little concerning, but a rear charge in from his dog should kill off the skink cohorts. And then the Herald of Nurgle should get back on his target. Yeah, he was just trying to dodge that, that javelin volley. That's fine. Elsewhere, I haven't talked about them for a while, but there's not been a lot happening. The Nurgle front line is just slowly grinding through, but grinding through they are. Chosen and Chaos Warriors are doing fine. Elsewhere, Exalted Plague Bearers and Chaos Warriors are doing fine. And then down here, we had a Chosen that's literally full HP right now. Still fighting away. Salon Mage Priest of Life is still fine, still alive. Herald of Nurgle missed a couple attacks on him. But I think Nurgle has this game in hand now. Without the Salon healing, the front line is going to slowly get whittled down by streams of corruption and stuff. And the Dread Saurians, they're good. They're a very good monster with healing support. But without it, they're going to get slowly ground down by Chosen. Jay sent me an autosave. Thank you, Jay. France Visitation's overcast just as the Salon died. The Feral Dread Saurian is, in fact, just a monster. Uh, its leadership's actually lower than you might imagine. So when it's surrounded by opponents and has nearby allies routing, it is actually going to think about leaving. Yeah. Temple Guard and Croxor are still fighting to the very end, but everybody else is routing and leaving Lizardmen up a creek without a paddle. And a rear charge in under the Dread Saurian right now would finish him, though I don't know if the Herald Nurgle is going to do that. Yes, he is. He has the balls. Balls for days. Dive straight in there with the Locust of Kondity to heal him and his friends up. That should tip army losses in. And Nurgle, maybe the worst faction in the game, 
beating Lizardmen. Mm. Possibly the best faction in the game, depending on who you ask. Who would have believed? Okay, maybe started fast forwarding a little soon, but we can all see the writing on the wall, right? Okay. So before before Jared Walker gets angry and leaves, because we did promise to answer his questions, I'm going to hover over this stuff real quick. Dogs and Exalted Plague Bearers did very, very well. Chosen did well, and Harold did well. For Jay, uh, I needed to protect his life salon a little bit more, otherwise he's doing fine. Like, his skink skirmishers were doing just fantastic work. Skink Hordes also did pretty well. I liked his build. Uh, just needed to heal up the salon a little bit more, and he would have been fine. Okay, okay, okay. So, so Jared Walker, you think I'm a piece of shit, right? Right. Okay. Well, if you join, you join my uh, my Discord. It's in the description of every video and every live stream. Join my Discord. Go to the Give Rat Ogre Roll. Get the Rat Ogre Roll. And I, I was talking to Liam earlier, and then he left the stream because he didn't like us. That that lets you join our new player tournament that we post every week. Every week we switch time zones. We switch what day it is. But every week there's a new player tournament. But what I didn't tell him because he left instantly was it also gives you access to our best of one practice pit. Now the only people in here are designated coaches or other new players. We also have a list of coaches that you can send questions about your favorite faction anytime. They're they're here because they want to be messaged by you. If they don't want to be messaged by you, we take them off the list. So don't you're not annoying these people. They're specifically here for this. So like if you want to learn Chaos Storms, you can talk to Blood Penguin, uh, Storm Runner, or Imais. If you want to learn Kislev, you go down to Blood Penguin or myself. Like every faction has people listed who are ready to help you. We also have replays for coaches where you can submit replays and someone will hop in and tell you things that they think you should have done differently with your build or things you should have done differently with your play. Um, you can just submit quick battles. It doesn't have to be in a tournament. It doesn't have to be anything like that. You can just throw a quick battle replay in here and ask our coaches what they thought of it, and they can give you some feedback. Or you can just hang out in the Hell Pit chat and talk with other new players about what builds you should be getting. And again, in people, the people in here are either new players or people we have vetted to be like coaches. And we do crack down on people trolling you. So if anybody in here tells you something that's dumb information, we'll get on it pretty quickly and tell them to shut the fuck up. Like, there's a difference of opinion, and then there's trolling. Right? We don't want people trolling new players in here because, like, new players, maybe you, maybe the person I'm talking to right now does, but there are players who are like, hey, I'm literally brand new to this game. And if someone tells you, like, Queek Headtaker is a meta Skaven Lord and he's really good, you might take Queek five games in a row and you're like, I can't figure it out. This guy's dog shit. And, like, Everyone else would yell at that guy for giving you bad info. So we do kind of police it in here where if you say something really fucking stupid, we'll call you on it. <laughs> like, if you're newer, we won't, you know, but like if someone who's been around for a while is, is saying some, some hot dog shit in here, we'll, we'll stop them. So anyway, hopefully that helps with what you're looking for. Um, if you do that stuff and you keep losing, you just don't enjoy multiplayer, then, you know, Sometimes shit happens, but we will give it every chance for you to have a good, fun experience. And there's Domination, too. My server is mostly about land battles. It's not, like, an official thing. It's not like you can't ask about Domination on my server. It's just my server is mostly land battle people. But there are people, especially the RTK guys, no good Domination servers. So ping anybody with RTK in front of their name and they'll help you out. Or, uh... Go to Turin server has some Dom stuff. It, again, my server isn't against domination. It's just I don't have a lot of Dom players, so you're not going to get a lot of traction. It's that's that's just not going to work. Okay, we have two games left in the final round before we will have our. We'll see if there's any ties, but for now, let's cast one more game. Dog Ruler versus Turtle Punch. We have cast both of their games a good amount, though those are some different factions we've been seeing all night. There's. Debess and I press buttons. And then there's J and Torison. Okay. We'll cast this one. I don't know if I've cast I press buttons yet or not, but we're we're getting around. We've cast a good number of people tonight. Oh shit, I was gonna grab a drink. Oh, go fast!
Okay, okay. I'm back. Ah. Skaven S tier? Hell yeah. Why are you hiding your meth factory behind you? Uh, because this helps with the audio, and the sun was setting when the stream started, so there still would have been a big white light behind me. Thank you for the kind words, Jared, and hopefully people can help you out. Hopefully. Okay, what do we have? First Grand Cathay of the day, and actually first Dark Elf of the day? Yeah. Crows of Cain, Dark Riders, Crone Helebron, Bloodrack Medusa, a War Hydra, a front line of Bleak Swords, some Dark Shards, and then the Knights of the Ebon Claw. On the other side for Cathay, two Crane Gunners, Jade Lancers, Peasant Long Spears, Jade Warriors, Iron Hail Gunners, and Dragonblood Shugi Lord of Yin with her Slow and Towns of Night and Missile Mirror. And that Slow is already in on the Crows of Cain, but they do manage to land. And as soon as they get on the Crane Gunners, they're going to do so much damage. The Crane Gunners start to pull back away. The Iron Hail Gunners, I'm surprised they haven't shredded the War Hydra. Oh, there's a Jet Lion! Hi, Jet Lion. Anyway, I'm surprised it hasn't shredded the War Hydra, but the War Hydra did get in here with actually minimal problems. Cathay, like Skaven, like Empire, like Dwarves, they're going to get very ahead at the start of the game, and then we'll see if they can hold on as their range damage is just pouring out into the Dark Elves. But as the Dark Shards of the Dark Elves get into range, as some of the Dark Elf cavalry gets in here, things will start to turn against Cathay. We just need to see if they're ahead enough. Crone Helebron has gotten into the fight. She's fighting with some Iron Hill Gunners, but uh, Dragon Ball Shugi Lord's trying to peel her off. And she needs to stay in combat with something, so if those Iron Hails get a moment to shoot at her, she will just get obliterated. War Hydra's taking a lot of damage. Dark Shards are going to kill the Empress Croman. These are now demonic units since the last update in Shadows of Change 2.0. So if they get them nice and low in their leadership, the Empress Croman will just kill themselves off. And Knights of the Ebon Claw are destroying some Jade Lancers, so the Dark Elves getting some signs of life in the backfield. More Dark Riders running in, and this is the scary part. Can Cathay hold on, or are they about to fall away? As the Dark Riders, if they can get in here, there they go. If they can get in here, they can kill two Crane Gunners super fast. That's 2,000 value off the battlefield in their favor. And then the Knights of Ebon Claw can maybe get around two. There is a Storm of Shadow slow, but it is too little, it is too late. And another Dark Rider comes out of left field, takes out another Crane Gunner. The Bounce of Power is going to get a lot better for the Dark Elves in just a second. Maybe not in their favor, but it's going to go right back to even. Knight's Seven Claw chase off the Jade Lancers. Probably want to honestly just turn around and come back already. It's not worth it chase, chasing the Jade Lancers off the battlefield, considering how expensive of a unit you're using. Missile Mirror is killing this Dark Shard using its own bullets, and a Talons of Night on the other one, though. So Cathay is getting pretty pissed off about these Dark Shards and wants to get rid of them. Still still have other ones that can continue to fire in. The Blood Rack Medusa is alive, so she can be used an artillery piece for the rest of the game. And the War Hydra, he's been getting fought this whole game, but he's holding on. His healing is keeping him nice and safe. Crone Helebron, a better melee combatant than a Shugenin Lord, but by not as much as you would think. Shugenin Lords are very, very good combatants for being a cheap Caster Lord, which is one of the reasons Grand Cathay was meta for so long before Yenbo got uh, his updates. Not Yenbo, uh, Zhao Ming got his updates and everybody started taking him. And 75% physical resistance on her right now. If she continues to fight out Crone Helebron. And like I said, Helebron's overall winning, but... Actually, the Shugenin Lords missed a lot more attacks than I would think against someone with just 50 melee defense. Regardless, Cathay is all of a sudden very behind the bounce power, and I definitely agree. Once their extremely expensive ranged units with all their ammunition got pushed off the battlefield, it was just over. Debes got Helebron on foot to get some get some work done. Crows of Cain also got really good value. The War Hydra was just soaking up damage for a long, long time. But I think the Dark Riders are going to have good value. Eh, at least one of them did. It's good stuff there. I press buttons. Solid game, solid composition for a player I haven't seen in a lot of our new player tournaments. It didn't seem like he forgot any units. He brought a caster, which is already an improvement. Sometimes in new player tournaments, I have to tell some people, like, bring caster. Bring caster. The jet line, unfortunately, sucks. It's just terrible. You can kind of use it in rush builds to give harmony bonus to melee units when you have no range units nearby, but when you're playing a defensive build like he was, you're already going to have harmony, and the jet line is just horrendous. I don't know why it's so bad, but it is, so he unfortunately ran into that. Other than that, decent positioning, good target selection, so I don't have a lot of complaints. 
Jet Lion is just stinky poo-poo. Okay, let's check back in on that tournament, shall we? I press buttons and Dog Roll are still fighting. Turtle Punch and Goose are still fighting as well. Never mind. I press buttons and Dog Roller just finished. So Dog Roller had a perfect 4-0. Did anybody else have a perfect 4-0? Or are we just calling this shit? Dog Roller. Bongo has three. And Dardanino has three. Bongo was beaten by Poetic Goose. And Dorino. I'm guessing you were beaten by Dog Roller. No. You were beaten by Fat Kid. Oh, okay. So nobody has a perfect 4 0. Besides Dog Roller. Alright. Do you think with the new War Wagon changes and make them dog shit like Inception and Warhammer 2? No. Is there a Discord to join? Yes, in the link of my video. Yes, there is. Um, no. My experience in the free LC is War Wagons at close range have the exact same... Sorry, I got distracted by something. They have the exact same DPS as they used to. But the thing is, is at medium range, they have about 75% of the DPS they used to because one of those bullets is going to miss. And at long range, they have about 50% of the DPS they used to because two out of their four bullets are probably going to miss. So the War Wagon nerfs are, they can't sit at max range and shoot at you anymore. Uh, they have to get nice and close, which is risky against archers or cannons or whatever. And with empire cannons feeling better and also a couple other cannons feeling better it's just like the ranged opponents to war wagons got buffed and war wagons themselves are a little less toxic you do have to kind of get in close and it's a little spooky so yeah i like if you do a raw dps check war wagons are probably the same but in in my practice games with some other content creators they feel like fine at best but i don't know there's one i still have to cast that'll come out on the channel soon that's rough for the war wagons they just shoot the whole game they don't matter okay uh we gotta go host the lobby for dog ruler To grab my replay or just gonna count my stream game i grabbed your replay i'll cast in a second we got to do finals does empire have ammo punishment now i would say nda but i know for a fact you've seen it on other people's streams so yes <laughs> yes they have restock now but that is not a leak that is not a leak that has been shown other places All right, so Dog Ruler's on their way in, and then we'll cast them some of the replays that people sent me, and then we'll call it a night. No, gyrocopters are for sure nerfed. For sure. But I think it's very healthy. So here's here's my pitch on the stuff is our empire still going to be strong yes and note that this opinion is without the dlc units i have not played with them i haven't even like seen them on my own right just talking about the free lc the empire is just as strong as they used to be the witch hunter got some buffs that makes him usable and very fun the, they got a gold wizard which is always going to be a buff like just getting a different lore of magic in your hero slot is is just good um, cannons got buffed and it feels really good 
Outriders got nerfed in a way because they're the same as the war wagons they do the same or more damage up close but at their at their max range they don't do um they don't do nearly as much damage so you have to get really really close and then it's risky so outriders got a bit of a nerf war wagons got a bit of a nerf so empire kite is worse but Empire's standing and fighting capabilities are better, and Empire artillery is better. So they're kind of like, with just the free LC, they're as strong as they were. Dwarves are nerfed for sure, but I think it's healthier for the game. Because the Dwarven blob with Gyrocopter Kite is pretty much dead. Gyrocopters are a lot easier to hit. A lot easier to decrease their DPS. Because they have the same DPS as they used to at 4 models, but now they have 12 models. So when you're firing a missile at them, you have more targets to hit, and each of those targets has less HP, so you can kill individual helicopters, and then every one you kill is like 10% of their D DPS gone, right? Well, the old system, if you killed one, it's 25% of DPS gone, but it was so hard to kill that one that you would, like, never get it. So this is, like, way healthier for the Dwarven opponent, and it makes the Dwarven builds less toxic. And then the Dwarves did get some big buffs to their Slayers, they got some buffs to their artillery, to their troll hammers, and then they have DLC content coming out. So I think the dwarves will be a lot healthier, even if they're technically worse, unless you buy the DLC. But I think it is, I think it's overall a nerf if you don't buy the DLC. But, yeah. Anyway. This is the final battle. Is Dog Ruler truly a bone ripper? Can they defeat me, ya boy, Dingus Pingus. Alright, we gotta get Red Ulger, Prince of Slaughter, because if you're not taking Red Ulger, Prince of Slaughter, then why are any of us here? For a caster, I need the Blue Scribes, because, again, if you're not taking Blue Scribes, why are any of us here? And then... We will take one of every demon unit. Oh god, I'm out of money. <laughs> All right, we are we are out of fucking money. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. We can be smart about this. So I can take maximum one of any unit. M maximum one of any unit, but that doesn't mean I have to take one of every unit. So to get a front line, I need to spend that much money for a front line. Okay, but now I have a front line. Let's get ourselves a beast of Nurgle. And then I need some mobility, so let's get Flesh Hound Screamers and Plague Toads. Okay, so far I haven't repeated anything. Uh, for some mobility, I I guess I could get a Seeker, but they're so fucking bad. <laughs> they're so fucking bad. I'm getting a Fiend. 850, I can get a Flamer. Let's go. This is the build. <laughs> How do I feel about the new steam tank changes? Uh, they're good. They're good. The steam tank, now I'm ready to be wrong. I'm ready to be wrong, but uh, the steam tank can kill infinite infantry without any problem. It can just mow through those fuckers like nobody's business. And it is nearly immune to small arms fire. Archers with Plague of Rust even, handgunners, it doesn't give a single shit. But it is so insanely weak to artillery like, I have a, at the very end of my 19 free changes video, um, you see two Dwarven cannons shooting at a steam tank, and they kill it in two volleys. So that's four volleys from a cannon would kill it. So it's insanely weak to artillery. It's very, very weak to a single entity duelist. It's super weak to anti-large cavalry. And a super weak to monstrous infantry. So basically the steam tank is going to roll over you and defeat your whole build if you have a bad build. If you're taking just like a teeny tiny little infantry box, yeah, prepare to fucking lose. But if you have a well-balanced build, if you just throw cavalry at it, it's going to die. Armor piercing cavalry, that is. If you throw non armor piercing cavalry at it, then it's kind of a stalemate. Like, you're cattle take some damage the steam tank will take some damage but nobody's really a winner and the steam tank will eventually get out of there just by causing terror and shooting them because it shoots them at point blank range perfect spend equals perfect build hell yeah brother
If you want the real story of what's happening here, Dog Ruler was the only person to get a perfect 4-0 in the tournament. So no matter what happens, they won. Uh, I was just being a little bit fun, and I thought we could do some shenanigans at the end. But uh, the end scores were Dog Ruler at a perfect 4-0, Bongo at 3-1, Poetic Goose at 3-1, and Andorino at 3-1, and Dr. Nerd at 3-1. Yes. Because Dr. Nerd didn't get a buy round, so he actually lost one game somewhere. Um, but I believe, yeah, he went 3-1. and one, And then Torison with 3-1. and one. So a lot of 3-1 and one performances tonight, but Dog Roller had the only 4-0. So FFA. So FFA. Now, I'll play this game, then I'll stream the replays that people sent me, and then I will have to call it a night, because it is 9 p.m. here, and I gotta go to work again in the morning. Because it never ends. How many replays do I have left after this? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. uh one two i have two two replays after this and i am gonna put a stop to submissions unless it is a game i have not cast from somebody like that sounded stupid but what i meant by it is like if a player that hasn't gotten a single game cast all night sends me a replay, I'll cast it before the stream's over. But other than that, I'm not going to do any more repeats. I'll just cast the two I have and call it a night. I think pass scores are disappointing. They do look rather mid. I haven't gotten to play with them. I saw their stats in someone else's stream. Dog Ruler is switching around a lot. Do you think the rework of flame cannons and gyrocopters made them worse? Yes. A hundred percent worse. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. The flame cannon the flame cannon taking an L was sad because it was it was a it was a fine unit that's getting a nerf and now is probably a bad unit. Um, the gyrocopters is 100% a nerf, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I think the gyrocopter playstyle was really toxic. It was just dumb. Like, and that's my opinion. You're allowed to like it. I'm allowed to dislike it. And if you like it, that's fine. But for me, I hated it. I hated casting it. I hated playing against it. And I hated playing as it. So when I was dwarves and I needed a win, I had to take gyrocopters. I just wouldn't pick dwarves because it's not a game. It's not a game style I enjoy. I like a, st a stalwart front line of dwarves that's never going to retreat, holds their grounds, and through strength, grit, and steel, just grind through the dirt. That's the kind of dwarves I like. I didn't really like being a wood elf, but pretending I'm playing dwarves. It's like, okay, I need to kite you with gyrocopters and chase things off the map and use my ammo effectively and dodge incoming rain shots. That's a viable way to play the game, but that's not how I want to play dwarves. So, I'm happy, I'm happy that game style got nerfed uh significantly and then slayers got some buffs and then dwarves are getting some dlc that'll hopefully also help so yes i do think it's a nerf i think it's healthy for the game same with nurgle nurgle getting nerfed even though they're already a d tier faction is really sad now they're getting a dlc but if you just if you don't pay money nurgle is going to probably be the worst faction in the game because they're getting nerfed and they're blobs their blobs which is one of their only like strong play styles right now it's not strong into a lot of factions, but when it is strong, it's horrendously strong in the live patch. Um, their blobs are taking a nerf, and again, I don't think that's a bad thing. I do wish Nurgle was getting buffs outside of the DLC. Like, some of the units you already have desperately need buffs, but it doesn't seem to be that way. 
Same with Kislev. If you remember, I know it seems weird now, but if you remember back in the summer, before Shadows of Change, Kislev was shit. They weren't the worst faction in the game, but they weren't good. And then the DLC came out, and all of a sudden they got Mother of Stankia, so an amazing caster chariot lord that can also kill everything. Um, they got Incarnate Elemental Beast, they got a Mortis Engine Anti-Large Armor-Piercing Duelist, which again, he's been nerfed since then, but bear with me. We got Akshina Ambushers, which were just Streltsy, but better and had stock. And since then, they've lost their armor-piercing ammunition, but they, they used to have armor-piercing, if you remember. You got Things in the Woods, cheap armor-piercing mobility, which before the cavalry updates in Shadows of Change 2.0, your mobility was all pretty bad besides Bear Riders. So it was like, if you bought the Kislev DLC, you're crushing it. But without the Kislev DLC, Kislev used to be pretty bad. Since then, we've had Shadows of Change 2.0, we've had various patches and updates, but if you remember way back to the summer, Kislev was, in my opinion, a D-tier faction if you didn't buy the DLC, and if you did buy it, they were A-tier. I didn't even put them at S-tier yet, but none of us knew how powerful Mother Ostanki was back then. We slowly learned it, and she was fucking ridiculous. She still is, but for different reasons. All right. Dog Ruler already won the tournament, but can they beat the Demons of Chaos, piloted by the best player in the world? I started with Soul Stealer. I win. <laughs> I started with Van Guy's Revenge. I win again. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. If they have any infantry worth killing, we're Van Geisting the shit out of them. Oh, my one... My one of anything max build. Can it win? Okay, Plague Bears need to spawn way up because they're slow as hell. Blood Letters need to spawn way back. Demonettes need to spawn way, way back. Need to buff the army abilities. Rot, Glorious Rot, the tier 3 army ability of Nurgle is like literally the worst ability I have ever seen. And it's been that way since day one. I have no idea how that ability has made it this far without being changed. It's just garbage. It's literally the worst thing I've ever seen. I'm not not joking at all. If it was a tier 1 army ability, I wouldn't use it. <laughs> that That's how serious I am about how it's terrible. <laughs> okay. Let's go. Ready, ready, GLHF. Uh... So they only have a thousand troops. If I can get a good Van Geist off, I can kill like half their army, but that also might mean that they're gonna just hard kite me. Uh, it's not hard kite. Great Stag Knights, Orion, Beasts Caster, and a bunch of Glade Guard and Ward Answers. Sure, whatever. It's fine. Alrighty, so let's get our Demonettes going. Let's get you shooting at that. So let's get you shooting at that. You walk up slowly to that, and then you go kill those. Um, yeah. Okay. We gotta get our fiends and our screamers and stuff all together, and then we'll actually be pretty fine about this. Okay. I don't want my toads to get all caught up on him. I am trying to save for my Van Geist Revenge. And then we're gonna defend our flanks. Toads, I specifically didn't want you to get caught up on this. Okay, I don't have enough for Van Geists yet. But I'm just gonna keep my mobility in reserve and counter those great stag knights when they go somewhere. Bruh, give me my fucking... Give me my Van Geist. There it is. Uh, fucking Kobe. Alright. Great Stag Knights are coming in. So one of my Screamers eat this charge. Flesh Hounds eat this charge. Because my Fiends can't, can't hang. There goes the Van Geists. There goes their entire front line. Push, push, push! They didn't see it coming! 
I didn't see it coming! Alright, uh, you back off. And Flamers back away from those guys that are getting you. But we're into the back line now, they didn't expect that. We got through two Eternal Guard with our Vangeists. Aspect of the Dread Knight? That's not a very good spell. I don't know what my other spells are, but I don't really have the bandwidth to take a look at my spells right now. Okay. Uh, Eagle's gonna fade away soon. I'm gonna dive Orion again. Just make him feel bad. I felt like we got a favorable engagement over there and we still lost, which feels pretty shitty. Ooh, Horn of Corn, that's useless. <laughs> oh, now we're getting some good shot. Uh, let's do Bolt of Change. Flamers are going to move up over there. Blade Wind actually could be pretty good. Yeah, we might have to do Blade Wind. Deathbringer should help me kill Orion. I'm even going to Flamer his ass. Wow, they're doing a lot of damage to me. Alright. So, we got that. Dodge. 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 Take that. Dodge. 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 My exalted big boy of corn. You chase them. I need to cut away. I don't know what's going to kill the Great Stag Knights. That's going to be a huge problem for me. Okay. If my Blood Letters don't die immediately, this will actually probably be the best I can hope for from them. They just get a direct fight with the very thing we want to fight. Um, Glade Guard are back. You guys are trying your best. So what spells do I have in the tank? Regrowth, Arcane and Foraging, Doombolt. Oh, for fuck's sake. Alright, we'll charge in here, see if we can bait the Great Stag Knights to just like stand around and flame her fire. Doesn't look like they're going for it though, so I'll try and fall back. So now I look like I'm in it. Flamers! Ooh, fecundity! We take those! We take those! Fecundity, baby! Flamers, fall back. Fecundity, save me. Hey, I got fecundity. Let's go. Um, so the blue scribes don't really want to be here anymore. And... Big Chingus. No, don't you fucking die. Don't you fucking die, you dumb bitch. Uh, do what you can. All right, cast this, because apparently you're just going to die to an eagle. Go, exalted death. Bring a big boy. Did my Doom Bolt seriously cancel? I'm just going to cancel like that. Go. Go, my Chungus of Doom! Oh, Wiss is wild for him. What's that gonna do? Armor? Against my 100% armor piercing greater demon of corn? Yeah. Yeah! Good fucking joke! Kill the mage, bitch. I need a route. Bum, 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 bum. I need them to route. Bum, bum. Need all of you to route. Bum, 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 bum. Alright, Eagle's gone. We're getting big damage back and forth. What's the tier 2 ability? Because I kind of need it to be a big one. Unbreakable. That could be useful. Tier 3 ability coming in hot. Tier 3 ability coming in hot! What is it? Hit him with a tier 3 ability! Give me it! Give me it! Give me a tier 3 ability! He can't be stopped! Oh, it's a fucking bullshit-ass rampage. Whatever. Just rampages these assholes. 
It's fine. I need the damage. <clears throat> and just stop him from cycle charging. <clears throat> He's still killing him. I need you all to route and leave me alone. Route more of them! Listen here, pathetic elves! I am Deathbringer! And that. Bam. 876 weapon strength! It's so much weapon strength! You can't deal with it! Oh, they have three volleys left. It hurts so much. Oh god, it's so much damage. I have Gore Feast? Oh, he has a heal now! I forgot that came in the last update! Holy shit, he has a heal now! Go, 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 go! You can do it! You can win! Kick their ass! <laughs> yeah! Go feast! Alright, uh, that guy's about out of ammo, so I'm honestly just gonna- I'm gonna pursue this guy that still has ammo until the ends of the earth. I will not let him live. Fuck this guy. Fuck this guy and all the pain he has wrought me. I have a message. Who is it from? Okay, it's from Dog Ruler. I'm behind on the balance of power, but I have to think that's insane, because watch this. Yeet us, delete us, motherfucker! Bam! Oh! What? What? Look at that balance of power now! One shot onto your pathetic god! Uh oh, fuck, 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 fuck. I give you speed, I give you vigor, just don't, just don't demonic stability crumble, that's all I ask. I will get you back to fresh. You will be my fresh little boy. Just don't army loss. Alright, I'm still killing. Still killing some stuff. We're routing some things. Routing some things. I really don't want to let these elves come back, but I also don't want to be a dick in a four fun event. So I'm going to go charge some war dancers. But if those guys come back and shoot me in the back of the head like little bitches, I am going to be so mad. <laughs> but chasing them off for the next 35 minutes also sounds like bad content. So let's just get in there. Bam. Oh wait, no. I'll just stay here and fight this. Ah, they're back. Who could have predicted that they would be back? Eh, decent damage. Archers. All right, we're still trying to kill some more dancers. Witness me, godson. Swing, my my beloved demon, swing. I actually don't think the elves have the DPS to take me out, even with their pathetic little archers who are currently shooting me in the back of the head. Destroy Fine, I'll go kill them. You there! Oh, you wanna go? You wanna go? I will charge you! Bam! Anyway, back to what I was doing. You there! Come here! Filth! You fight me! Yes! Yes, you do! Die! Alright, back to what I was doing. You there! You fight me! Die! You there! You fight me! Die! <laughs> Red Olga, Prince of Slaughter! 3,800 damage value. Uh, these guys, these guys did good. I mean, we killed two whole Eternal Guard with the Blue Scribes. Fiends sucked. Flamers did well. Demonettes and, and Bloodletters did fine. The Beast of Nurgle held up his center for quite a while. Um, yeah, we did it. <laughs> oh.
Orion was too much of a meme. O Orion got to fight a greater demon and he got his ass kicked. 1,700 value. Oh, for the glade card, that was hilarious. Okay, so let's officially go GG to Dog Ruler for the sick 4 0. Good tourney win. Love to see it. And then I'll give him Dawn Ripper roll. Dog Ruler, if you're in the chat, if you want to play in the new player tournaments in the future, we can talk about it. I can review your games and decide if you're still new or not. Um, but for right now, I'll give you the Bone Ripper roll and move on, but, yeah. Like Dr. Nerd, if in the future you still want to play in new player tournaments, I kind of review your gameplay, and I see if, like, if you're kicking the shit out of everyone, <sighs> come on, man, I'm not gonna let you play. But, like, if the games are pretty close, we can discuss it. Okay, three games left in the stream, then I'm going to go to bed. This one is from Goose and Turtle Punch, Dwarves and High Elves. But that is a Sun Dragon. <laughs> that right there, that's a Sun Dragon. I see Imric, I see a Life Caster, I start to fade away, and then I see the Sun Dragon. No, back at it, baby. You're new and you want in on the next? Um, Tony Paino. Have you gotten the spiel on how to join these tournaments? If not, let me know. If yes, then we host one every single week. We switch between time zones. One week we'll do new player friendly, then uh, sorry, NA friendly, and the next week we'll do EU friendly. Um, so every other week there should be a tournament in a time zone you can partic uh, participate in. Dog really, you did great. Note to self, don't win a new player tournament. Cool, cool. All right. Uh, for this game in front of us here, we have High Elves with two dragons, Imric and a Sun Dragon. Going to have to use their breath attacks very, very well to win this game. We have some Illyrian Reavers and Dragon Princes, a bunch of Spearmen, Archers, and a Mage of Life with just Regrowth. The other side for the Dwarves, minus the Blast and Charges, Dwarf Warriors for front line, some Iron Drakes, Quarrelers, Thoric, Double Fane, spread out, uh, Dragonback Slayer, the Grudge Thrower, and two Cannons. Cannons are currently punishing Imric. As the Sun Dragon gets a little breath attack down to the Iron Drakes, but Iron Drakes with 40% fire resistance didn't really give a shit about that. Ha, Will. Ha. Uh, Yaroslav Kozits. Will deserves to be punished for the jokes of that scale. Ha! Also very funny. Uh, Yaroslav, if you have the Bone Ripper roll and you can't play in new player tournaments, once again, that's a standing offer for people who think they should be able to participate in new player tournaments. Just contact me, and we can talk about it. But, like, we are operating in reality. If I tell you you're too good to be in a new player tournament, don't be a bitch about it. <laughs> like, I have some people that love to troll me, and I can appreciate a good trolling, but there are some people that are actually, like, mad when they're like, I'm not a new player, what are you talking about? It's like, bro, I'm watching your replays. Like, you're slamming kids. Just... <laughs> You're not a new player, trust me. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Uh, Imric and his Sun Dragon are landing in the cannons to stop that pressure from coming in. And now the Dragonback Slayers are grouping up around Imric. And while they will get a good trade, this also means they're not here to countercharge the Dragon Princes, who just go storming through the Dwarf Warriors and start pushing around Quarrelers, who are already damaged from the breath attacks of the Sun Dragon. Archers firing in on the backs of these Quarrelers. Their AD armor is still helping, but their Bronze Shields are not. And the Iron Drakes massacre their own miners with blasting charges to get to the spearmen. Uh an Elgi is worth a dwarf if you can if you can kill him. You know these iron drakes are probably writing grudges right now saying, Oh the crook and Elgi are hiding behind our dwarven brethren. Their deaths are on your hands, elves This brought to you by every dwarf book I've ever fucking read. I love the dwarves, but their their lore is hilarious because they'll do stupid shit, get killed, and then blame everyone else. 
Anyway, sorry. I got distracted by laughing at dwarves being silly. Dragon Princes have fully just gotten into this backline. They're disrupting a lot of things, coilers and such. That was a big breath attack from Emmerich. That was a less big, but still fine breath attack from the Sun Dragon. But with the Dragon Princes back here, the Iron Drakes can't really fire. The Corlers are having issues firing, so their ranged units are not doing too much. And this cannon is offline yet again. We still have a Grudge Thrower counterfiring against the Elves, but the Elven Archers seem to be mostly in good spirits. One has taken significant damage, the other two seem to be just fine. The Inner Archers are also doing some poke here. Dragonback Slayers. Taking down Dragon Princes is pretty good for them. I have to imagine they're quite happy with things. Yeah, 1,100 value and climbing. They're, they're plenty happy with what's going on around here. But the archers have gotten the gist that Dragonback Slayers are a problem and are now shooting those poor guys. Bronze Shield, 15 armor, not going to be enough to save them from the archers. Sun Dragon is trapped next to a Thane. Thane will beat him up real good. Dragon Prince is trying to help out. have lost most of their HP doing so. They will be dead within the hour. Would I can be considered new if I can consistently win, but nothing like pro level is good? Patrick Walker? Yeah, probably. If you haven't played in any of our tournaments, just join the new player tournament and see. If you slam it, oh well, you win and then we know you're not a new player, but yeah. Grudge Thrower is pushed away by Imric. I don't know what's gonna stop Imric at this point. There's no Trollheimer torpedoes, there's no Thunders. All of their armor piercing missiles are gone. So unless he just like AFK sits in the Dragonback Slayers, I think Imric is gonna be just fine this game. And it's not like Thork Double Thane can beat him up, especially with proper cycle charging between him and a Sun Dragon and with Archer support. They'll be okay. Sun Dragon's back in to fight the Iron Drakes for a little bit. And oh my god, that cannon's back online. This cannon's been so tenacious, and actually Imric's heal cap is here. I didn't even know he was taking that much damage. I didn't see him get that much healing either, but okay. Okay. Maybe there's something here. Imric lands back on the Grudge Throwers, pushes them off for what feels like the 50th time. The Sun Dragon gets away from the Iron Drakes, but uh, the Elves are running out of a front line. Having Imric and a Caster and a Sun Dragon does deplete your money by quite a lot. So they have one healthy Spearman, another half health Spearman, and that's it for their front line. They have one Archer that's still in the fight. Another one's been super wounded, and he's kind of on the outskirts, and another one's getting chased off by miners. Big overcast regrowth, though, onto a super dead sun dragon is going to give a lot of damage value. And where did that healthy-ish dragon prince go? There it is. Imric needs to bounce out and get this isolated Thane instead of fighting Thoric on top of all of these troops, like the dragonback slayers next to him. And this dragon prince is also getting a little overeager, though I am... I'm getting more concerned about the High Elves lack of armor piercing infantry. They don't have White Lions of Grace. They don't have War Lions of Grace either. Iron Drake's getting dove on, but they get a really good volley off on the Spearmen. And we're at the point in the game where the High Elves need every body they can get, so any volley those Iron Drakes get off is a brutal loss for them. Dragonback Slayers getting depleted down to 30 out of 80 models, but their HP is so low they're going to lose models with almost every attack that lands these days. Something's happening here. It's a Master Rune of Speed. It's 24 melee attack and speed for everybody in the area. The Iron Drake's continuing to fire away, and I hear that. Is that cannon back online? Yes, it is! <laughs> this cannon doesn't give a fuck! It has 900 value from zero kills. It's just been shooting Imric and the Sun Dragon all game. <laughs> and every time he knocks it offline, it comes back. I don't know what's going on with the Lyran Reaver Archer, but it does have to go into melee and kill that fucking cannon. Dwarf Warriors seem to have noticed it, but the Lyran Reaver Archers haven't noticed. Now they're moving away from trouble, but they need to dive in there onto the cannon. The healthy Spearman is still cleaning up some Dwarf Warriors in the distance, and this Archer peeled for itself. So a very healthy Archer with eight volleys left could come back in the late game. It's not like it's going to carry the game, but it is good. Imric isolates out Thoric in front of Archers and away from his own support. The Sun Dragon is protecting his back. This is actually a huge opportunity for the High Elves to really take control of this game and put him in the dirt once and for all. But he's missing a couple key attacks on the Thoric. With his super high melee stats and isolating him out, it's not a player's fault that Imric's missing, but Imric was missing some key shots. Now he's getting good lumps in, but the Sun Dragon has died for his efforts, and Imric is still trying to make it worth it. But those missed, like, two or three melees might be the difference between Thoric living and dying. 
Amrak needs to back off soon. He does have Dragon Princes setting up for maybe a rear charge, but instead they're going to charge down and get these uh, cannons and Iron Drakes offline. Lunar River Archers are also doing some good back and forth charging just to keep things a little unsettled. Thork is still taking a lot of damage, but he's dealing a lot back to Imric. And it doesn't matter that Imric has healing on his roster right now, because he himself is heal cap. So he's just as mortal as the rest of us. The Dragon Prince's charge was huge off screen. Took out the cannon once and for all this time. It ain't coming back. No more. Iron Drake's also super low. And the Grudge Thrower crew is back somewhere, but they're not near their actual mounts. Ruin of Wrath and Ruin kills the Spearman. Does a little bit of friendly fire to the Dwarf Warriors with great weapons. In comes the Sun Dragon again. And the Dragonback Slayers are activated to go kill this thing. Overcast to regrowth, healing it up, though, getting its vigor back to perfect. Thor's going to hold his ground for now, but he is taking big damage. The Sun Dragon can knock him out in two more hits. And maybe three. The Hives are about out of healing at this point, though I think it is too late. I do think they've prevailed. Um, Thoric is one hit from Imric from death, or two hits from the Sun Dragon from death. Imric's in. Double Fanes are trying to surround him. That's a hit from Imric. Ooh, seven HP. Imric kills him on the next charge. And the Dwarves losing their leadership, losing their hope, are going to start routing around the map. Gelato is fucking boss, and Slanesh is taking a hold of you. Hell yeah, fat kid. Get it. Alright. in the For the sake of time and watching Hero Hammer, I am going to play this at times two speed. It's not to be rude. It's because it's getting late, and I have two more replays to get through. And watching Thanes get cycle charged by two dragons is not exactly what I call a good time. So times two speed is the Thanes get fucking bodied. Army losses. I honestly thought that would take longer, but Emmerich hit three in a row and then terror out him. So, it's fine. Good game from Turtle Punch and Goose. Sun Dragon actually paying for itself is maybe a first for me in 2024. In 2024, I think I could say that confidently. All time? Not as sure. Turtle Punch, solid build. I don't believe in Thoric Double Thane. I know the Thanes are like a good stat stick, and you can prove it to me statistically that they're strong, but I think you just lack too much agency that the Thanes end up just getting kited. Maybe not in every matchup, but in this matchup, I feel like the Thanes just get kited. So maybe don't take them here. All right, two games left on the day. Turtle Punch and Doge. And then Jay and Tor... Torison. Let's do Jay. I think we've only cast one Jay game today, so... Get another one on the... On the books. You left? I see Turtle Punch, I see. Next year on 420, there'll be a high off to see the Queen and the Chronic. Jay versus Torison. Jay taking Zatan the Black. I hate Zatan. Some people actually like him, but I think his snare is too close range and he has a hard time getting range to use it. For the Chaos Orbs, we have a bunch of Chaos Orbs, Blunderbusses, and Fire Glaives. Four, bl four Blunderbusses, three Fire Glaives, a front line of Orc Laborers, two Hobgoblin Wolf Raiders with bows, and we do have a Demon Smith Sorcerer of Death. With Spirit Leech and Reforge. But he has nothing to Reforge. That's got to be a mistake. He doesn't have any Hellforged units that he can Reforge. That's unfortunate. Just a bit of a whoopsie there. On the other side, for the, the High Elves, we have the Fireborn Dragon Princes off in the woods. Tyrion, Arab and Aaron, Wielder of Sunfang, Defender of the Phoenix Crown. Silver and Guard in the front line. Lob and Sea Guard in the back. Do have the Keepers of the Flame Phoenix Guard and a Mage of Metal of Final Station and Searing Doom. Tyrion is playing with fire. Literal fire. Fire power fire. If he overextends versus this many blunderbusses and fire glaives, he will die in a single volley. Fire glaives is going to get some poke in onto him. I am the turtle. It's true, turtle punch, you are. Blunderbuss is trying to line up. Oh, kids, say your prayers because Tyrion's about to disappear. Oh, the Blunderbusses didn't get attack orders onto him in time, and he does plow through them. Okay. Maybe Tyrion gets to live to see another day. The Orc and Goblin Laborer front line is falling apart before it even hits the front line in some cases. But Zatan is trying to get to Tyrion. 
If Zatan had netted Tyrion in range of the blunderbusses, he would have died, but now they're all like stuck in a weird melee, so they're gonna have to back off and get things figured out. This Castor build is, is going to have to kite the High Elves, as weird as that sounds. It's not actually gonna win like a straight up fight. Zatan fighting with Tyrion on top of some halberds is doing very, very well, but they need to separate out some of these ranged units. Good Spirit Leech on the top, but they need to separate out some of these ranged units because now they're getting attacked by like Silver Garden shit. Blunderbuss is raking the High Elves from the back. Silver shields don't help you when you're facing the wrong way, and there's a net for Tyrion. The Sadistic Snare lowers his melee defense down, but he does get that Heart of Avalorn. Thankfully for the Chaos Orbs, the heal is significantly reduced because he's on fire. And what is this? Overcasted Searing Doom down to the area. It'll hit the Silver and Guard too, but overall... Well, actually, yeah, it did more damage to Silver and Guard than anything else. Fire Glaive's still shooting. The Hobgoblin Wolf Raider's in the back line. Not sure if they want to engage with Lothar and Seaguard right now. Those hybrid spears are spooky. Blunderbuss is trying to get a shot off onto the Fireborn, but they're half obstructed in melee. And Tyrion's still trying to rout. Sadistic Snare has finally worn off. And the Fire Glaives, I don't know what they're shooting at for now. Blunderbuss is still trying to fire sideways in the Silver Guard. This feels rough for the Chaos Orbs right now. The balance of power is like 50 50, but. A lot of their range stuff is already compromised. A lot of them are all still up and available. Tyrion's getting Spirit Leech as he runs away, but he will, I mean, he'll get away. Or will he? Ooh, those Fire Glaives have more range than I would have thought. He rallies. That's actually funny that it's bad for him. He didn't want to rally, because now the player has to realize that he's rallied and realize that he's still in danger and give him new orders. But if he had just kept running, he would have gotten out of range. Fireborn still doing some good disruption. Chaos Dark Blunderbuss is getting shot by Lava and Seaguard in the side. Fireguard and Fireglaive is actually doing okay against Sylvan Guard. Better than I would have expected. Like, they're losing, but they're not losing by a lot. Tyrion gets gunned down. His Heart of Avalorn is still on cooldown, so he doesn't have a heal for another 38 seconds, and he's not going to get it. He's going to die here to the Spirit Leech. So the High Elf Lord Snipe is completed. Lava and Seaguard still holding in the backfield, still shooting, but Blunderbuss is getting good sh side shots to the Keepers of the Flame, who have physical resistance, but they don't have missile resistance, they don't have fire resistance. So this Blunderbuss is getting good damage down. Really good Searing Doom on a clust up Blunderbuss. It's not going to dodge in time. That is amazing. I've got Wolf Raiders with bows. These guys really don't know what they can do about the situation. Charging into high statted elven spears is not a good time for them, but now they're seeing counter shot by the bows too. That's pretty rough. Zatan's still full HP. Deathcaster's still full HP. We do have some more ranged coming back. Can the four Lava and Seaguard of the Elves carry? That's really what we're down to here. There's still 86 of you hanging out at this hour of night. I don't know what that's about, but if any of you aren't subscribed, like, consider doing that. If you don't want to, that's fine. I, I don't judge you, but I'll at least throw it out there. That if this is your first stream watching of us, you should probably do that. You should probably do that. I've got more freighters are pushed off by a lot of the Seaguard. Now a lot of the Seaguard are still counterfiring the Infernal Guard Fire Glaives, and Assyrian Doom's going to hit them over the top. These guys are unshielded. They just rely on their 100 armor to keep them safe. Well, the Seaguard, however, have silver shields. So they'll probably win that duel over time. Keepers of the Flame push off some blunderbusses. Strangely enough, Infernal Guard actually do beat the Silver and Guard in the long run. We have ourselves a shooting match. What's behind me? Eh, some goblin laborers, some blunderbusses coming back still. Keeps the flame running around. They're actually going to get a rear charge off on the Infernal Guard. You never see the Keepers of the Flame get a rear charge on anything. Thanks, Tony. Goodbye, Fire Glaives. This is a close one. I'm starting to get to the point where I'm concerned Zatan can kill everything. Because Lob and Seagard aren't going to do very much damage to him. It's really if the Keepers of the Flame can stop Zatan, and they're getting Spirit Leech, so they're going to start losing models here pretty quickly. And we have Blunderbusses and stuff. Yeah, without the Keepers of the Flame being healthy enough, nothing can kill Zatan. He's just going to roll. Oh, the Fireborn are back! Look at them go! Nine Fireborn charging the back of these Blunderbusses. Once Charging wears off, it looks like they're going to rout. 
we're hanging in there for now. Keepers of the Flame route away from Zatan and the boys. Zatan did bring his Boundless Cruelty. <laughs> nice build. Whatever. Oh, the camera's spinning. I didn't notice that. My bad. He did bring his Boundless cruel Cruelty, so he has minus leadership. But I hate how this spell works. It's, um... It's minus leadership that scales the more people are around. But the more people are around, the higher their leadership's gonna be. So it really doesn't work very well. I hate it. But Final Transitation hurts the Demon Smith Sorcerer a little bit. Quick little sadistic snare on the Zlothian Sea Guard. Stops them from intercepting Zatan, I guess? And the Fireborn did manage to kill that blunderbuss. Man, this keeps coming down to the wire. It's a close game for you two. Will, I think you're great. Fireborn continue to pummel through Chaos Dwarf Blunderbusses to the last of their ability. They have three models left and they're fighting. They're fighting and they don't give a shit. Another Spirit Leech onto the Lava and Sea Guard as Zatan fights against these other Lava and Sea Guard, but like, look at him. Look at him. He's taking no damage from this fight. His stats are too high to be killed by hybrid Elven Archers. It's not going to be a real thing. The Silver Guard are trouncing this Demon Smith Sorcerer, though. Significantly lower melee defense than Zatan. Yeah, he's getting poked. He's getting poked. Infernal Guard are back. Love the Sea Guard. No ammunition on the battlefield left for any of them. So if they can maybe route this Infernal Guard, we'll just have ourselves a melee slap. Blunderbusses are back. Firing whenever they can. Love the Sea Guard. Shields raised, boys. Shields raised. Marching in. Ow! <laughs> God, that still looks like it hurts. Another Spirit Leech from the Demon Smith Sorcerer, and hey, the Keepers of the Flame are back! Okay, now we get some armor piercing. Zatan's starting to actually take damage now that the Keepers joined. This is so freaking close. <gasps> we have a lot of the Sea Guard with ammo back. That's huge. Because getting being under Missile Fire is a leadership debuff, so it can help route some of these dwarves. And the Castors are even starting to shatter. Oh, the High Elves are ahead on the Bounce of Power yet again. Do have one Infernal Guard with Fire Glaives back, and they're trying to shoot at these Lawn Sea Guard who are routing. Can the Lawn Sea Guard that have ammo get into range to shoot at those guys and route them so that their friends can come home? I don't know. I also don't know what this lady's been doing. I wonder if she has Final Transitions back. That would also be huge against Zatan. But I don't know where her Winds of Magic are at. This game's going on so long, it's like... Do you really have a whole bunch of Winds of Magic? Just chillin'? Another Spirit Leech for Lawn Sea Guard. And these Lawn Sea Guard... Just spending their time shooting at the little demon smith. Got a couple pokes in on him. Frontal Guard Fireglaives are also back shooting along the Sea Garden. How's Zatan doing against the Keeps of the Flame? He's lost about 500 HP since we checked in on him. But every little poke counts. Especially how late it is in the game and how hard it is to deal with Zatan in any capacity. A lot of the Sea Guard are trying to walk past these guys and just go shoot at the Infernal Guard Fire Glaives because the Infernal Guard are making their other Lothard and friends lives hell. Blink at him. Oh, he had a final transmutation to the back pocket! It was an undercast, but it still did enough. Did a lot of damage to Zatan. Demon Smith Sorcerer's getting real low. Now, I do have to say the balance power is a little disingenuous in the favor of the High Elves because this Mage of Metal being full HP, it also treats her like she has full Winds of Magic, which is not true. But a good Searing Doom from her onto the Infernal Guard. If you don't have enough Winds of Magic, like, at all for a Final Transitation, then that was fine. We are down to just Zatan and a Demon Smith Sorcerer versus the High Elves. The High Elves are down to not having a lot of anything left, and they Spirit Leech off a lot of the Seagard that still had ammo. Times two speed as we watch Zatan just kind of cleave his way through some things. The Mage of Metal joins to fight the Demon Smith Sorcerer, and he will get pushed off. That'll be a big loss for the Chaos Dwarves. We still have Zatan. He's still taking damage. But as these guys clump up, his Boundless Cruelty should be stacking? No. Dude, I hate how this ability works. It's so fucking bad. More minus leadership, the more people are around you. But in the late game, he, he can barely get it to 30% charged as he's surrounded by people. Uh, It was super close. Well played by Jay and Torzin. Nice job for Torzin to stay in it. Really drag it back. 
mixed value across the range units, but like some of them did very, very well. Zatan did okay. Deathcaster did amazing. Torzen, Tyrion got rolled. Keepers of the Flame did fine. Silver and Guard did okay. Lob and Seaguard were true heroes. And the Metalcaster with 1900 value. GG. Final game of the night is going to be Turtle Punch and Doge Ruler. Doge Ruler on Zinch. Oh, it's not Doge Ruler, it's Dog Ruler. I'm just being stupid. Never mind me. Just being dumb. Last replay of the night. Bretonia with Rapunz. That's a Bretonia I can get behind. All right, for Zinch, we have three pink horrors, some Zongors and Chaos Horrors with Halberds, more Zongors at the front line. Two Centicors of Zinch in the Vanguard, Metal Caster up on a disc, and then the big new Chaos Lord of Zinch with his Halberd on the ground. On the other side, we have Raponce de Leoness on our horse, Henry Le Massif in the sky, a front line of Peasant Mobs and Men at Arms. We do have a Life Caster with Regrowth and Earthblood, two Trebuchets, a bunch of Peasant Bowmen, and I think three Cav. One Questing Knight, one Knight of the Realm, one Knight Errant. Zongors will crash into hapless peasants as the Chaos Lord of Zinch also rolls through them. And I wouldn't stand for that if I was a peasant. I would run away immediately. Raponce is trying to get involved as the trebuchet is firing overhead. They're just trying to poke down the halberds of Zinch that they know are going to be a problem. If their cavalry can get in the back line, they can sweep up the pink horrors pretty easily. But I don't think they've noticed the centicores in their back line just yet. I love how Raponce is ignoring the Chaos Lord and just going to go fight Zongors. It's fine. It's just fine. Both sides are going to trade their backfields, it looks like, as the knights are closing in on the pink horrors. The Centaurs of Zinch are back here with the Archers and Trebuchets. Overall, I think that trade, if it happens, will benefit Zinch. Knights and Errant. Creeping down here. I don't know what keeps happening tonight that people keep accidentally getting their people to walk instead of run, but they all need to be running. Yeah, now they're running, but it might be too late. Centaurs do charge into the Trebuchets, immediately knocking them offline. Other one was pushed away by a Searing Doom and some Pink Horror Fire. The Peasant front line is doing not great. They're having a tough, tough time. For the forces of Zinch, their Centaurs just need to spread out. And, like, one needs to go hit this Peasant Bowman, the other one needs to hit the other Peasant Bowman. They've already shattered the Trebs, so they don't need to keep attacking it. It looks like that seems to be the case. Chaos Lord of Zinch, avoiding Rapunzel is probably smart. He might win the duel, but it's not worth giving her a duel. Just leave her alone. She's fine. You can ignore her, and that's one of the reasons for Ponce isn't that meta. Centacors is going to catch out the Damsel of Life. She is on horseback, making her significantly less tanky, even though she is faster. The Centacors are going to take out Peasant Bowman. It's turning into a bit of a Zinch stomp, as now the Knights Errant have finally arrived at the back line, and they get big picks with Henry Lamassif's help onto that uh, Caster of Metal. But we have Knights of the Realm that have zero value and Questing Knights that got caught by Zongors, so that is just a good catch by Dog Ruler, but unfortunately, a bit of a whoopsie on the side of Bretonia. And now the Cav is trying to path through the Zongors and get to the back line as they receive an overcasted regrowth. Centicors are peeled off of the Damsel of Life. How is this going? Chaos Lord has change or die. Buffing up all their people, but Raponce gets sort of Leoness, giving her 93 melee attacks. She should be hitting whenever she swings at this Chaos Lord of Zinch. Looks like she's getting distracted fighting other shit, though. <clears throat> Chaos Sorcerer of Zinch. Not having a good time. Is going to get back up into the sky. Doesn't look like Henry can pursue. And he is faster than Henry, so he should be fine. His pink horrors are raining in fire onto the Knights of the Realm. Pink Horrors are going to die. Zongors might route soon. And then maybe the Chaos Lord of Zinch gets sniped out by Enri and Raponce. Yeah, they're both here. This is a dangerous situation for this big guy to be in. Centicors of Zinch still fighting with the Damsel of Life. They get a lot of damage to her. Then she overcasts a regrowth that hurts herself. So then she gets nuked out. And is going to get pushed off the battlefield here any second. A full health Centicor of Zinch is still running around the back line. We still have two full health Zongors. One of which did overextend chasing some stuff off the map. 
Not worth it to chase a peasant mob. Peasant mobs are just kind of bad. Nice final transmutation out to two combat single entities for Bretonia. Both Enri and Rapunce are getting poked down by that one. It was an overcast, but I think at this point Dog Ruler just wants to get any spells out they can because they know that this character's been the target of Lord's Night, I think, throughout the whole game. Enri and Rapunce diving back onto the Castle Lord of Zinch. I have three messages. What's it about? And that'll be a GG. I'm receiving word that there's a tournament tomorrow. Tequila Sunset has a tournament tomorrow. This week we're bringing back another single Lord tournament. Going to be a four fun tourney again, so people can have fun with some of the more off meta Lords tourneys. Will be this Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Oh, okay, cool. If anybody wants to play in Tequila Sunset's tournament tomorrow, that is. Uh, Around that time. Boop. There. That's from a fellow YouTuber. Good guy. Okay, okay, okay. So for the final game. Centaurs of Zinch and the character Zinch both did fantastically. Halberds didn't actually get involved that much. Pinkors did their best, and Songors pushed off all the peasants. For Turtle Punch, he memed too hard. Rapunce is bad. Other than that, the build's acceptable, but Rapunce is just, like, really, really bad. She puts you on the back foot for how expensive she is, and she doesn't buy you any agency. All right, he's also a YouTuber. Tequila, if you want to plug your YouTube, that's fine. I, I sent your tournament. Um, I got you going. I got work in the morning. Thanks to everybody who played. Congratulations again to Dog Ruler for the perfect 4-0. That's pretty cool. I do have some DLC, not DLC. I have free LC content coming out. I have two replays coming out in the next two days, and then I have two more replays to, that I have the replays Four, but I haven't recorded them yet. And then I was going to do quick campaign videos on Gelt and the Dwarves. So, yeah. Good night, lads. Good night, everybody. I'll try to be streaming more soon, but life has just been super crazy with the new job. And trying to make pre LC content. Goodbye, 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 goodbye. Is there somebody we should be raiding? Warhammer 3. I very strongly doubt anybody's streaming this late. Lemon Pledge. Yeah, let's get some of this stuff. Who the hell is Lemon Pledge? Oh, he's playing some Zinch campaign, so... I'll rate him. I'll do my due diligence. Done. Alright, go get him.